So if we charge to 40%, that would be, oh my gosh. <laughs> Ryan coming in hot, full brakes. I'll help him out. We'll get the charger in for him. Let's go. Oh no, Ed Colton's leaving. Okay, we gotta go as fast as possible. I plugged in and I ran inside. I had to poop so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go in. I was like, I'm leaving it here. Yeah. So you did like, the old oh. plug in and walk away yeah. and the one time it didn't work. So we're at basically same state of charge right same now. Same state of charge right now. <laughs> oh my God. But so we're already getting more. Dang it, I wish I would have picked that up. Look who it is, Mr. Connor. Come on, Subi, go! And genuinely, I have no idea who's gonna win. It could be any of us three. You guys are coming out the wrong way. Let's go, let's go. He's got one more stop. He's ripping it properly. <laughs> what a freaking epic ending. Hello, good morning, and welcome to a legit race to Vegas in reverse. If you've been following our previous episodes, we raced from Colorado to here in Las Vegas in a Tesla Model S, a Lucid Air, and a Porsche Taycan. The big three, the holy trinity of EV today, the long range, long distance electric vehicles. These cars are all technically impressive in their own right. Um, some of them have pros, some of them have cons, some of them use different charging infrastructure than the others. And ultimately what we're trying to answer is, which is the best road tripper? You buy these cars to do long distance. They all support very high charging power, very long range but which one's actually the fastest? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. If you've been following our previous episodes, you know that the Lucid has huge range and huge efficiency, but charges very poorly on existing charging infrastructure. So I got a big boost coming out of Colorado, but then was stuck for two hours in Green River waiting for a charger to open. And you'll notice the Taycan doesn't have the huge range of the Lucid, but can onboard way more energy in a period of time of being plugged in than the Lucid can. So while it doesn't get the big full charge boost, it can do these quick stops, you know, 10 minute stops, eight minute stops, onboard all this energy and get back on the road and go. And so that's really that key selling point of the Taycan is high speed, high charging power, and actually fairly efficient. And then the Tesla Model S here, uses the Tesla supercharger network. And even though we're using a Plaid instead of a long range, which has nine miles less range than the long range, and we're not on the factory aero wheels, we're on Martian wheels, they're light, but they're still not the most efficient setup we can do. Colton would have beat us here to Las Vegas by over three hours because he just has a consistent, reliable charging experience and fairly good range on the initial bump. So each, each of these cars have their own strengths and weaknesses. And what we did driving out here to Vegas really helped me, Ryan and Colton optimize the cars to get their maximum. Now that we know what the heck we're doing and what chargers to skip and we have to drive around some of the crazy infrastructure, the real race to Vegas starts. The return, we're going back to Windsor, Colorado, basically Fort Collins, back to clear detailing where we're gonna end the test and it's a full-on race. Five miles an hour over the speed limit. The cars are all topped up to 100%. I'll run you through the testing procedures, the specs on each of the cars, and whoever gets to Windsor, Colorado first is the winner of the race to Vegas in reverse. A huge thank you to Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund for sponsoring this video. Guys, this raffle, an incredible raffle, is ending very soon and their tickets are undersold. Let me explain to you what's going on. Chesapeake Climate Action Network is giving away a Tesla Model X Plaid or a Rivian R1T or even a Lucid Air. It's your choosing if you happen to win. Uh, they have a number of tickets that they're giving away, not very many, so your chances were already incredible, but since the tickets are undersold, your chances of winning one of these vehicles is even higher. So what I need you to do is go to evraffle.org, support Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund, where they are working on climate programs to make our climate safer and our planet more livable. Of course, the, the uh, auction is ending very soon, so you need to get in quickly, but your chances of winning one of these incredible Incredible cars has never been higher, truly. So head to evraffle.org. A huge thanks to CCAN Action Fund for sponsoring this video. 
and good luck to all of you and hopefully one of you wins one of these incredible cars. You guys join me where it's well over 100 degrees in Las Vegas. We're at the Resorts World where we typically end these tests now. This is my favorite spot to go in Las Vegas, a nice hotel, sort of away from the hustle and bustle of the strip, if you will. And we have three awesome electric vehicles you guys know I'm a huge Porsche Taycan fan. This is my personal Tesla Model S, and this is our Lucid Air. These are not test cars, these are our own cars. And um, what we've done is we've selected the longest range versions possible. So the Lucid Air is the real big story here. 516 miles of EPA rated range. And what's even cooler actually is all three of these cars have almost the identical mileage and use case of previous driving. They've all had fairly heavy DC fast charging. Anna and I drove this car across the country uh, back, you know, using basically DC charging only. My Model S has been on a few road trips to Colorado and back. We cannonballed this Lucid across the USA and so they all have roughly 12 and a half thousand miles on them now somewhere around there uh, they're all within a couple hundred miles of each other they've all had heavy DC charging so there's not a huge disparity between the vehicles so we're really trying to el eliminate as many variables as possible the Lucid Air actually fully charged this morning to 515 miles of indicated range, indicating one mile of degradation. Um, I just think it's a little bit of BMS sway because this car only charged to 505 miles the other day, but uh, hey, I'll take it. So this thing, which I'll be driving the Lucid, is the range king. I got over 400 miles on this, or just about 400 miles on a single charge driving from Colorado out here. I'll walk you through my plan to maximize the charging infrastructure today, but we are skipping all Signet chargers because this car does not like to charge on Signet chargers on the Electrify America charging network. Huge surging, really elongates charging time. It can't be good for the car. And uh, basically we are just going to avoid all of that, use the range of this car and try and beat these two. Now, the Porsche strategy, Ryan's gonna be taking the Porsche again. He really knows how to optimize this car, use the Porsche trip planner, use the automatic preconditioning, which actually the Lucid just got a big software update where it now has automatic on-route battery preconditioning and like seemingly very snappy software. So I gotta play around with that. We'll explore that in this video. The Taycan is the big battery rear wheel drive on aero wheels. It is the full range specification here. You could not get a more range version of the Taycan than this one. Non-power charge port door, factory aero wheels. This thing is maxed out. So that has a 112 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. This is 93 kilowatt hour gross, maybe 85 usable, 87 usable, something like that. The Model S has roughly 98 kilowatt hours usable, 96 kilowatt hours usable, just under 100. So fairly big disparity in, in battery pack sizing, but they're all very different in the way that they go about the road. This is a Tesla Model S Plaid, of course. We have the Martian wheels, brand new set of Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires and they are all sitting at 100% state of charge. Colton's gonna be using the supercharger network. Got a helicopter coming over here. Colton's gonna be using the supercharger network as well as maybe one CCS stop in Salina. We'll see what he ends up doing here. But basically everyone's goal for this test is to get from here in Las Vegas to Windsor, Colorado first. We're using the infrastructure that's in the ground because when you buy a car, you buy into the infrastructure. We learned which charging stations we need to avoid. For example, no Signet chargers for the Lucid at all. We just need to completely avoid them. I'll walk you through our trip plan. And the Taycan's gonna do the Taycan thing, which is run it low, charge it fast, you know, eight to 10 minute charging stops, and then rip to the next one because that has such a great charging curve. This is really the holy trinity of electric vehicles today. This is the question we get asked all the time, which is the better road tripper, Tesla, Taycan, or Lucid Air? Well, in this video, we're truly going to find out who is gonna be crowned the champion. And uh, I think, predictions, I think Colton's gonna win in the Model S. That's I think my thought too. I think Colton will win, fallen shortly behind by you, and I will be bringing up the rear again. But we'll see, see, you have the biggest risk in the Taycan, because I think if all conditions were ideal, the Taycan could win this. Yes. But you have to rely on the absolute garbage <laughs> charging network that yeah. we experienced yeah. on the way out here. Oh, I, I think I totally have a shot if charging were good. Yeah, and so, but we've learned 
there's Super lines at chargers. You got blocked by like three Lucids, all full charging. 39 minutes. <laughs> Just crazy. We had a two hour wait in Green River. Um, it's really insane what's going on. And you have to do more chargers than anyone, I think. Yep, sure do. And so that's the magic of the Taycan, but the Taycan only works when the infrastructure is there to support it. We have a whole video on that here on this channel where I had one in Germany and I was like, it can work. Maybe not in the US yet. <laughs> and Colton, what's going to be your plan in the Tesla today? Yeah, so I'm going to try and get a pretty far reach on my first charge, tentatively planning for Beaver. I think that's probably a good, good solution there. And then I'm kind of trying to decide what I'm going to do because I have one station that I'm worried about, which is Richfield. Um, to and that's an me. old V2 exactly. kind of slow Four supercharger. Stars. Yeah. So if I show up there, like I literally need, I think, a five or six minute charge to get to Green River and then charge from there. So I'm considering going to Salina, but I don't know if I want to deal with that because I would hate to have a video come down to Tesla loses because of CCS. Right. Well, we'll go through each of the individual, uh, you know, strategies as we get yeah. in the cars. Um, basically, they're all sitting at 100% state of charge. It should be really interesting to see which one can make it to Colorado first. Uh, I'm certainly going to be stretching the range of the Lucid all the way as much as possible. But bearing in mind, I can't go beyond where the ABB chargers end. I have to use ABB chargers. This is the riskiest one because we know how to optimize Tycon. We've proven this is a monster, but Ryan's gonna have to stop a lot to maximize that car. The Tycon's a car that makes you work for it. It's enjoyable. You gotta stop, get it right at the right temperature, the right state of charge. But when you get it right, oh, it's amazing and it's so fast. And the Model S Colton is just gonna have to do no, no work. He can just put in trip planner, follow it, and still has the chance of smoking us because the chargers are so good. So let's jump in. You'll go through everyone's strategies in the cars. It's gonna be a long video as usual. And uh, let's hit the road. I'll give you a very brief overview of my charging plan for the Taycan. Of course, starting with 100% battery, and we're here in Vegas, and we're going over toward Denver, very close. So my first stop, uh, I don't have it marked on the map, I don't know how to show you exactly, but Cedar City is right about here. Uh, next, I will be stopping in Salina, which is right there, Grand Junction, Edwards, and then into uh, Windsor, which is where the end of our race is. So four charging stops, and of course I will show you them in more detail as we go along, and I'll put in my first one so I can show you guys a little bit more. Here's my first planned leg of the race uh, from here in Las Vegas to Cedar City. And it says I'll arrive with 15%, more than enough, that'll be great. Um, and, you know, I could potentially slow down and make it another, I can't remember exactly, 60, 70 or so miles to Beaver, Utah. Uh, but I don't think that's a great plan for me. I do need to stop in Salina, and it's very close from Beaver to Salina. Furthermore, with the charging curve of the Taycan, I'll actually get better charging speeds at 15% than I would at 1%. So this is, I think, a solid plan. I can ride the charging curve very well, and I can make it to Salina where I'm going to have to do uh, a very deep charge. The plan is to script, skip Green River, which is what uh, caused the big hang up yesterday, but again, that's going from Salina all the way to Grand Junction, which takes about, I don't know, over 90% of the battery, I would think. But again, this is the first leg, and I think, you know, it should be a nice, easy cruising one. Good morning from the very noisy Tesla Model S Plaid. It is 102 degrees here in Las Vegas, and we are headed back to Windsor, Colorado. So. Let's see where I am planning on going today. Let's get the map moved around here. So we are headed to Beaver. Um, Tesla is saying we can't make it there. It's 224 miles. It is uphill most of the way, but we're at 100% state of charge. It says we're gonna get there with 5% only if we stay below 75 miles an hour. I find that to be a little conservative. We'll see. Um, we do have lots of charging options all V3s in this area. So we have it in Mesquite, St. George, um, Cedar City, and then Beaver. And then after Beaver, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. Probably rely on a very slow um, charge here in Richfield on an old V2 supercharger. The only thing I'm concerned about, there's only four stalls. 
And then my plan is to go from Richfield all the way to Green River here. That's a pretty good jaunt, mostly uphill. Um, we've got some big elevation and big uh, elevation in the opposite way going downhill. Then my next plan is to go probably to Parachute, Colorado, get a good charge there on a V3. So today, not ideal for the Model S because we have two V2 superchargers not utilizing the full potential of charging. But let's see how this goes. We are ready to go 100% in the plaid and uh, AC going because 101 degrees in the morning is just insane. Well, good morning from the very hot, lucid air, 105 degrees outside. Software update was successful. Uh, I have to say this software version, just on you know driving it up here basically, has been way snappier. The cameras came up instantly. Um, you can see there's huge upgrades now. There's um, basically... Yeah, huge range uh, charging stuff, uh, route planner, dream drive is now better, infotainment reset, not sure, so I guess you can hold the Lucid Air logo for 10 seconds, I don't know if that should have been in there, but okay, um, automatic battery preconditioning, all this great stuff, so what I want to find out is what is going to be our trip plan for today, well just to show you kind of the distances of everything, Gosh, it is baking in this car. Once I know how far we can go, I'm gonna crank on the AC, but I'm saving all the energy in the battery pack because if we look here, displays, let's see, percentage, distance. We're at 514 miles of range at 99%. I drove it up here to the top of the garage after a full charge, so we're very, we're at a high 99. We wanna go to the farthest away Electrify America ABB station that we can make it to, which is Richfield. Um, Richfield, no, Utah, yes, but Electrify, Electrify America, E-L-E-C, Electrify America, Richfield, Utah. Uh, we're not going to be able, and it, it is uphill, so we have a huge climb coming out of Vegas, and it's just a constant, never-ending climb. There's a slight tailwind. Okay. And you can see here, we're in Vegas. It wants us to charge once here in Beaver, is it? Yep. It just wants to go from 21 to 35% and we'd get there at 18. I wonder if there's a way in this new software update for me to end this. No. So the whole trip's 285 miles, which this should be able to do given even including the elevation gain. Um, so that's our plan. We are going there to Richfield. And then from Richfield, we are going to pretend like Green River doesn't exist because we got so screwed in a line yesterday in Green River. It was just absolutely insane. So we're going to go, at least we have the ability to, I don't know what the other guys are going to do. Colton doesn't have to worry about it, but Ryan will in that car. We're going to do a deep charge in Richfield, skip Salina because it's a, a signet station, skip Green River because it's terrible and then go to Grand Junction, which is slightly off the highway, but at least it's an ABB station and there's never typically a long line. And then from Grand Junction, I think we can just make it back. I think we're gonna use the big range of the Lucid today to avoid the problems that we've have been having at charging stations. So as I'm just sweating sitting here in the heat in the Lucid because I don't wanna kick AC on, I wanna win this thing. I wanna give this Lucid every last chance we can get because technically yesterday, we would have come in last place if Ryan didn't get held up. Uh, getting stuck behind all those lucids on a charger. And so the best, the one, you know, limitation with this car, there's a couple things, is anytime you stop at a charger, it's a gamble. You don't know who's going to be there, what chargers are working. We didn't find one station yesterday, at least I didn't, with every charger fully functioning. The best we saw was two out of four stations functioning. Crazy that you buy this very expensive lucid air and you have to deal with the most god awful charging experience on the planet. Truly, lucid needs to partner with Tesla or build their own charging infrastructure as soon as possible because we just can't recommend buying this car if this is your experience. And then Lucid will tell you, well, most of your charging is done at home and, you know, don't go on long trips, basically. But this car is the long, it's got 516 miles of EPA range and 351 kilowatts of charging power. It's built for road trips. Buy a Chevy Bolt if you're just, you know, driving around town. I don't understand their argument. Um, also, 
the charging curve on this car is very poor. The battery pack gets hot, uh, but also just the way that the, the, the power flow is in, you get a huge peak from zero to 10%. And then after 10%, it's just a constant slope down. So our whole goal today is gonna be to unplug as soon as we can make it to the next charging station and maximize our planned two charging stops, possibly three, uh, at the lowest state of charge possible. I think we can do it all the way back, even considering the elevation gain, two charging stops. That's my plan with the Lucid. It may not be the fastest way to drive this car in the ideal world. It might be actually to use the Tycon method, hot from charger to charger. But there's just so many variables at chargers that I want to avoid stopping as much as possible. And that's what the Lucid gets us. So I'll do two deep charges, you know, a pretty deep charge in Richfield and a pretty deep charge in Grand Junction. And I think that's our key to success. The other guys, don't have the range of this car to be able to skip the chargers. The big competition for us, I think, is gonna be the Model S. Even though it doesn't have as much range or as much peak charging power, it, the Model S has an okay curve. It's not that much better than this, but Colton knows every time he plugs into a Tesla supercharger, it's gonna work, it's gonna give him full power. So um, let's head off to Richfield then, 285 miles. We are ready to go. I am gonna kick on the air conditioning because I will die. So AC on and uh, windows up and let's hit the road. So my plan today is just to stay consistent. Um, plug in quickly, give myself a good buffer between five to 8% uh, according to like Tesla route planner here and just kind of use the mental math and real-time data on the car. Yesterday was an amazing day for the Model S here, but we were able to utilize basically all V3s except for one charger in Green River. Now today going the opposite way, we're climbing all day and we're in the least efficient car. So I think we do have a bit of disadvantage there also using the V2 superchargers. So I don't know, it's gonna be a toss up. I really think if Kyle can get his charging dialed that lucid, it's gonna show its magic. But again, when you buy a car, you buy the charging infrastructure. So I wanna rely on Tesla. I definitely could probably use CCS today, but there would be nothing worse than pulling up to Salina and not being able to charge and not ruining the entire video. So I'm gonna stick with Tesla today. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have a good day. So settings that we're gonna go through, let me flip you over here to this. So I'm gonna put my pedals and steering in chill mode, comfort steering mode, and we're gonna be in low suspension on full sport because I was getting this wafting effect going down the road um, in comfort mode. Other than that, we are just gonna be cruising in the Model S here. I've got the screen tilted and uh, yeah, we're just gonna be good to go. I had so many disengagements with autopilot yesterday um, I'd be cruising with my hand on the wheel and it would just get absolutely annoyed with me. So we do at a backup have this, but I don't think we're gonna utilize this today. Um, let's stick with Tesla. Let's see what this infrastructure can do. And uh, yeah, let's hope the guys over here have a great day as well. I know Ryan's at a pretty big disadvantage. He's basically got a full charge in Salina to get across to um, Grand Junction. So this will be a really interesting day. Well, let's get on the road. As Kyle mentioned, this car is amazing at charging. The curve is so good. It's so flat and it stays above high, it stays at high numbers for such a long time, so deep into the pack. It's really incredible. Now, of course, at out of spec, we love running things out, getting below 5% state of charge, but not everyone loves to do that. It can be a little bit stressful and you might not have a lot of options if uh, something goes wrong. But with the Tycon, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just plug in for another 45 seconds and give yourself plenty of buffer. And you don't have to pull in at 0% because the charging curve is so good. If you plug in even at 20, 25%, you're gonna see well over 250 kilowatts still. So it's okay to uh, pull off a little bit early. I think, uh, as I mentioned before, I'll be pulling off in Cedar City, which is a little earlier than everyone else, but as long as the chargers are good, this should absolutely rip it and we can make it to our next stop, which is Salina where we have to do a deep charge. Now what I'm gonna do, because the car is gonna be wanting to navigate to this charger and I really want the most efficiency possible, I'm gonna turn off automatic battery preconditioning, which I have off right now, because I don't want it to precondition to a charger we're not going to, which is gonna burn energy. Once we pass Beaver and we're on our way to this charger here, which is in Richfield, 
I'll show you over here. So once we pass Beaver and the car is like, oh, no bailout options, you gotta go there. That is when I'm going to kick on battery preconditioning if we have enough buffer in the tank. But for now, let's conserve as much as possible and uh, it'll be great. The only problem is it's really freaking hot out here. Yesterday we saw over 115 degrees Fahrenheit, just crazy. These videos always require a lot of upfront explanation, don't they? So the rules for Race to Vegas, this is technically Race to Vegas reverse because we had such a poor time yesterday. Um, and th that result still counts. The Model S won yesterday, no question. I think the Lucid can win today. It'll be interesting. We were planning, by the way, just so you know, to use just the in-car route planners to race back. But we had such an egregious problem with charging yesterday that we were like, let's just do a redo and, and rip back. So that's our plan. Um, we have a five mile per hour over the limit speed cap. And what that means is we can't go more than five over. In the Lucid, you'll see an indicated six over, uh, but you know, speed limit 60, you'll see an indicated 66 on this car. And that's just because it's off by one mile per hour, the speedometer, and that is the rule. We are adapting it slightly just to get out of Las Vegas because there are some construction zones, there's some areas that have dangerously low speed limits. So just until we get to basically Mesquite, we have a hard cap at 65 miles an hour, whatever we need to do there. As long as all three cars get driven the same way, I don't care, um, but that's our way to ensure that we're safe. We're not gonna get run over by trucks, which was happening to us yesterday. They put a 40 mile an hour speed limit in the middle of the highway and Colton called, he's like, all right, we gotta go like at least 50 through here. So I told myself and Ryan, let's bump the speed up to 50. It was just, you know, so, so now we know, okay, five over for the whole rest of the drive, but just to get out of Vegas, we have a 65 cap. So let's do that, let's get out of Vegas. We're all gonna drive as a pack over to the highway, and then we will uh, basically, as soon as we hit the on-ramp, it's game let's on. Let's hit the road. In the drive, off we go then. Race to Vegas, reverse starts right now. The fans are screaming on all the cars. It's hot as crap out here. Um, Man, the Model S and the Taycan look amazing, don't they? This Bolt over here didn't want to pay the level two charging prices, so he just plugged into a wall outlet up top, which is great. We're all gonna drive as a group, get out of the hotel together. That way there's no big advantage because there's a little ticket booth down here. Get over to the highway, and that's when the you know real competition starts, if you will. So we just had a little conference, and the plan is for us to go 65 until we get to the uh canyon uh, into uh, Arizona St. George so should be good we are just pulling out of the garage here but I'm gonna wait for the other guys that way our idle time you know AC run time this morning try and minimize as many variables as possible I'll just pull out to the middle of the road here hazards on no one does anything this early in Las Vegas it's 9 37 in the morning right now so here comes Colton in the Model S we'll have him come alongside Hell yeah, brother, race to Vegas reverse. I think race to Windsor sounds less cool. Race to Fort Collins sounds better. Race to Fort Collins, but we're not going to Fort Collins. We're going one town short of it. Race to clear detail. Starting the timer here, just getting on Sammy Davis Jr. Boulevard, headed home. Kyle and the Lucid, so we're really gonna start once we get on the highway here so we can make it a fair advantage instead of trying to uh, get out of the city because otherwise we're just going to get caught by stoplights and stop signs so here we go we are on the move 9 38 a.m we got ryan and colton well ryan's behind colton i don't think you can see him in the mirror but i promise i'll move a little bit left he's back there and we are on the road heading to windsor colorado should be just over 800 miles today um the thing i like about this test is this will prove you know which car is the best road tripper by trying to really maximize the available charging infrastructure. I-15 North to Salt Lake City, that is our plan. This car really is at the top because regen is severely limited. You can't put any more energy in an already full battery pack. Oh my God, a Nissan Leaf in Las Vegas, their battery must be fried. You really don't see many Nissan Leafs in hot climates because they have no active thermal management. Uh, so that cells just overheat and degrade. Anyway, on we go then. The guys are in the mirror. We're all merging on as a pack. Hopping on to I-15 North here, following Kyle and Ryan just behind me in the Porsche Taycan. Here in the Taycan, we're uh, 
on to the beginning of the highway stretch, which we all got on together. Uh, it's not a race to get on the highway, it's a race once we get here. Um, so we're all together and going well. Slowly making the pass here on Mr. Connor in the lucid air. Man, that thing does really not look good on those 19s, goodness sakes. go all pulling out of here as a pack I'm trying to get as close to the back of Colton's car without going over our speed limit so he can push the air out of the way for us we have the Tycon behind us and uh, cruising along nicely for the beginning bits of this trip let's hope the charging infrastructure doesn't let anyone down I really want to see what these cars can do when they're unlimited I can already tell you this new lucid software update has some great improvements uh, it looks like some traction control stuff, like when you go full off, it might actually be full off now. We'll have to try that uh, because there's some of the wording around that has changed. Dream Drive seems to be way more centered in the lane, no more hugging the right side and just not a single blip of ping pong. So very impressed with Dream Drive. Granted, we're only nine miles into the trip, but already noticing a big difference from all day yesterday some of the displays, the warnings, all these things just seem to be more refined, a little bit better tuned. The trip planner is not as good as I was expecting. The updates there, not great. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. And they added a shortcut button to pull up the trips from the home screen. So you no longer have to go settings, vehicle, trip information. You can just hit one button to get all your efficiency numbers. And I think that's great because geeks own Lucid Air and we all want the numbers. So it's awesome. Yeah, very, very pleased here with the software update. It was a big one, took an hour and a half to install where most of them are only like five to 20 minutes, somewhere around there. Uh, this one, an hour and 30. So they changed a lot of little stuff, just fine tuning the car. And uh, really glad I still have this to experience this new update because I'm already like less annoyed by everything. So all good stuff for me. We've got Kyle ahead of us and uh, Colton behind us uh, and things are going well. My projected state of charge has gone up to 18% from 15, so it seems like it's a little conservative, but we'll keep going and see what we end up at. And of course, I've had all the experience from yesterday uh, as well, uh, letting me know that it tends to be pretty accurate. Uh, it's, it's pretty spot on generally, uh, plus a few percent, minus a few percent, um, depending on some conditions, but overall. I messed up on the speed limit. Colton got me there. I didn't realize we were in a 75 zone. He came inching past. So now we should be matched up doing the same thing. My big concern is stretching at this 246 miles with the big elevation gain. And I really do not want to have to stop before then because these chargers just get so clogged. And um, yep, so I'll you know maintain five over until uh, it either looks like we'll make it to the charger and then in that case great we've maximized all of our energy or if it looks like we need a little bit more range as we get closer i might start dropping the speed slightly but i mean really 300 miles in this car is nothing i did 400 miles over the rockies and still had 10 percent remaining yesterday so it should be totally fine so i'm just gonna stick to the maximum allowable speed of the test not sure why the car is being so conservative here with this arrival, but uh, we'll just ignore that for now. I am currently in the last place in the Lucid at the moment. You can see the Model S there in the right lane and the Taycan all the way up there in the left. Uh, I think everyone's speedometer might be like a quarter of a mile an hour off because the Taycan's just inching away, isn't he? Uh, maybe I need to do like 82 at times which is what I noticed yesterday, but eh, these little things don't make that much of a difference on this race to Vegas. I'm also trying to stretch the range a uh, big uphill. So yeah, let's go back to 81. We'll keep it fair and square, but uh, all is great here in the Lucid. AC's working great, 106 degrees outside right now, 105, and uh, couldn't be happier inside of this car at the moment. Dream Drive is fantastic. So many small improvements. It allows for a little bit of in-lane repositioning so I can nudge the car over to the right as an example, but I'm still in dream drive, but look, I'm hugging that white line on the right. And then as I let go, it'll push me back over to the center position. Really nice, still needs a little bit of smoothing, but a huge improvement for the driver assistance system. I'm so glad we waited uh, to film the hog back until after this update came out. 
So as we're just cruising here, I started thinking about my upcoming stops and started playing with the Tesla route planner here. So Tesla believes that we can go from Beaver to Green River, which I proved we could do yesterday. Now, the thing is, what I found interesting yesterday, I charged to 90% in Green River and arrived to Beaver with around 10, I think it was slightly less than that, maybe like six or 7%, but we are mostly climbing um, yesterday, so we're gonna be coming downhill today. But what I'm gonna do probably, if this works out, this is way better than stopping in Richfield. So I'll just charge in Beaver for 20 minutes, get enough juice, probably not 20 minutes, because it'll says, say we get to Green River with 16%. We don't need that large of a buffer. So I think we can get this dialed in and completely skip Richfield, which would be incredible. Going Beaver to Green River would really be beneficial today. first leg and so far uh, Colt and I have just been uh, trading places back and forth there's you know some light traffic here and there uh, of course we're still doing the speed limit plus five is our limit so up to 80 but you know uh, with this traffic you know I'll uh, move over to pass someone then move back over and then get stuck behind someone and then he'll pass me and then I'll pass him but it's been good we've just been uh, basically next to each other this whole time my route guidance is also predicting 22% state of arrival, a state of charge when we arrive. Uh, so that's a good bit higher than the 15 it initially said. As we're cruising into Mesquite, Nevada now, I think it's important for us to explain the need for this test, the race to Vegas. And um, a few things to note, a lot of people will just look at numbers on paper and say, well, the Taycan has a low 200 mile EPA range rating and the Lucid has a 516 mile range EPA rating and the, uh, the Model S is somewhere close to 400. How could the, how could the Taycan even compete? How is this fair? The thing to remember is it's not all about the range. In fact, it's actually less about the range than anything. It's all about the charging and of course the efficiency. And the Taycan, while it doesn't have that much range on paper, is very underrated. We've shown many times that that exact version of the Taycan big battery rear wheel drive on aero wheels can do just about 300 miles at 70 miles an hour, which is I think more than enough and way more than the EPA rating. Uh, shows that Taycan overperforms on range than rated, but most importantly, when you factor in a few charging stops, a charging stop in this car, I noticed a lot of Lucid owners spending 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes at chargers, whereas in the Lucid, I'm never at a charger for more than 12 to 14 minutes. And so the, the uh, excuse me, in the Taycan, I've never had a charger for more than 12 or 14 minutes. So the ability to onboard energy that quickly can compensate for the lack of the initial range and actually make the Taycan a better road tripper than this car on a long trip. That's essentially what we're trying to find out here is what's the best strategy? Really fast charging in terms of a great curve or big range and then okay charging, which is the Lucid's very okay charging. And I would say almost bad charging for the size of the battery pack. You get a big peak, but then it just dies um, in this car. And uh, also the, the Tesla is here to show that the car you buy um, you're tied to the charging infrastructure. So even if the Lucid can go really far in a charge and charge quickly, or if the Taycan can onboard energy very quickly, we're still stuck with the public networks because both Porsche and Lucid at the time of this recording have not announced Tesla support. Tesla hasn't announced high voltage support for version three, which is why I don't think we've seen these announcements yet. I'm pretty sure Tesla will, but you know, I think it's holding up this transition. And um, ultimately, you know, we're stuck with true garbage charging experiences when when Colton can just show up in the Model S, plug in, get 260 kilowatts like that, and the Model S has a fairly okay charging curve where he can onboard energy very quickly and just go and hop from charger to charger. 
He also has much better amenities at the superchargers than the others on average. So that's the point of this test is to show that the numbers on paper don't tell the story. We need to actually go and see which car's strategy is the best. Uh, and right now, even though the Model S, I would say is very mid-pack in terms of battery capacity, efficiency, charging power, um, the advantage of the supercharger network might make that car a clear winner. Yesterday, it definitely was. On the way to Vegas, the Model S would have won by three hours. Uh, but today, now that I know which chargers to avoid and we're only using ABBs and hopefully we won't get stuck in a line, the Lucid might have a chance. But no question, I'm having to work really hard. We had to do the run initially to get a good result for the Lucid and the Taycan. The Model S wins either way just because of the supercharger network, in my opinion. But let's see which is the faster road tripper. That's what we're finding out now. Welcome to Arizona. One of the most beautiful stretches of American Highway right through that canyon. Can't wait to show you. Coming into a big road stoppage here. So this was the area yesterday. We had a 40 mile an hour zone. As you can see, like guys over here, like flying by trucks and trucks flying everywhere. We got people going on the shoulder. Holy smokes, welcome to uh, Nevada area, I guess. Unless we're, nope, we're in Arizona right now. Just the absolute tip of Arizona. So. We're gonna try and get through all of this traffic. I know the guys behind me, uh, we've got Ryan directly behind me here in the Tycon. Kyle's a little farther back. This is, uh, it looks like it's gonna be single file all the way through here. So this looks like a, a pretty big stop. Now we did burn up some more juice there. We were going 80 miles an hour and we're starting to climb now, I believe. Um, so we're gonna get into Beaver saying now right at 11% state of charge. We'll see how that changes. Again, it was up at 16, it was down at five earlier. So this is a really hard number to gauge, but I still am pumped that it looks like we're gonna be able to get to Green River. Absolutely no problem. This number keeps going up. We are definitely not sitting at Beaver for 25 minutes, uh, especially when we're gonna get the, to Green River 16%. Do not need that much of a buffer. I'll probably give myself high percentage, maybe seven, eight, nine percent buffer there just because we do have quite a bit of climbs and the speeds are very, very high in Utah. So we have an 80 mile an hour speed limit, which means we can go 85 miles an hour. So yeah, we're gonna try and avoid that and uh, here we go. We're going to try and get around these FedEx trucks. If you guys are ever road tripping, never be by these things. I've seen some sketchy stuff with these. Here we are coming into a quick slowdown. That dude's just sending it down the shoulder. <laughs> um, yep, so it looks like we have some traffic put into the mix. All the cars are going through the same thing, so all normal. By the way, this hazard light's always a little bit annoying because if you have to go for a quick, I always end up either kicking the cabin light on, you know, with this one or something like that, so... Yeah, this should just be one button in my opinion. But let's see how Dream Drive does in traffic. So we'll kick it on, we'll hit this, we'll raise up the speed, and we'll see how it inches through. I can see the guys right up here sitting in traffic. The back of the Taycan always looking great there, just in that corner. Now he's out of view. Left lane closed a thousand feet. Should we let him in up ahead? I say no, we are here to win. No one let in the Tesla or the Taycan. Let us through in the Lucid. We're in Arizona and there is a good little bit of traffic right now. Uh, we've been, this is actually the fastest we've been going for a while. Um, hopefully it'll clear up soon, but uh, we're all stuck in this, so it shouldn't affect our race uh, other than what time we uh, get to our arrival. But again, it'll affect all of us equally. So uh, level playing field here. And here we are coming into the canyon. It's just so unbelievably gorgeous through here. One of the craziest stretches of highway. We've done it many times on this channel and it's just absolutely epic. So we are headed through a very favorite part of the drive for me, going through this 
pretty canyon through here. Just amazing views out here. That nice desert look. So we are now back to our posted speed. So since um, Mesquite, basically, we are just going posted speed plus five mile an hour buffer. Again, mine is showing one off, going 61 miles an hour. It was way worse going into Vegas yesterday with the speed zones, but we are all on level playing field. But as you can see, so we're going 61 and there's just people just flying by us here. We've got more trucks. We are just holding up people. So when you have to pass a semi here, you make some people mad to say the least. But we are ahead of Ryan and Kyle right now. Ryan got stuck behind that FedEx truck, which is exactly why I pushed forward. The trucks have been an issue for me on this drive. Uh, yeah, I got held up yesterday by some seriously slow drivers doing like high 30s. And I'm like, oh my gosh, guys. So let me give you an update here on the Plaid. We are at 60% state of charge. We have traveled 103 miles getting an average of 343 watt hour per mile. So right around 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So we're looking pretty darn good. According to Tesla Route Planner now, 10% state of charge arrival in Beaver. So let me keep driving here and get on the route. speed limits here I believe right after St. George where we get up to 80 miles an hour so 85 miles an hour which we can actually do as I'm getting a little fan braking here. Model S was actually reasonably good yesterday and it looks like we have a what the heck is going on with all these speed limits so it's okay now we're gonna bring it down to 76 to make sure we are in line ready to go on this. Welcome to St. George, Utah. We are rolling through, heading up I-15, and then we'll be banging a right onto I-70 in about uh, 140 miles, something like that. So yesterday when we were coming over the Rockies, I was driving the Lucid, of course, and I did a huge range charge uh, where we went up and down. And I noticed that I was just smoking the other cars in terms of range and efficiency. I was, you know, significantly more efficient. I was passing, uh, you know, Ryan when he was at like 10%. I still had 40 or 50% left in this car. But today, interestingly, I just called Ryan. Our efficiencies are almost the same. Makes no sense. The only thing I can think, and this is sort of my impression of driving the Lucid, um, the higher speed you are, and also the more AC load that you have, this is a much bigger cabin to cool than the Taycan, uh, actually this sort of suffers. Now I am still more efficient than Ryan. I'm getting 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. He's getting 3.3. .3. He's at about 58% state of charge. I'm at 66. And we, I expected him to be at like 30% state of charge, but no, he's still at 58. So not as big of a difference today than what we saw yesterday, which was just the Lucid was just so far superior from an efficiency standpoint than the Taycan and the Model S. I texted Colton to see what he's at, um, but uh, yeah, 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour now in the Lucid. I think it's the speed. We had you know 80 miles an hour right off the bat leaving Las Vegas. And also it's very hot out here. And I think any external conditions actually kind of levels the playing field where if you get everything just right for the Lucid, the right temperature, the right speed range, you know, which it really loves that right around 70 miles an hour, then it's very efficient. But as soon as you start putting AC load at 80 plus miles an hour, the actual difference between the cars starts to shrink a little bit. Interesting, I would not have expected that, but that's at least what we're seeing today. Well, I just got Colton's results. He's at about 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm at 3.5 and Ryan's at 3.3 in the Taycan. So the Model S is the least efficient on this leg by far. Now, granted, we're not using a long range on aero wheels, which I really wanted to use for this test. We just couldn't find one. And the whole idea was like, well, even if Colton can win in the plaid with the you know Martian 
wheels and sticky 295 section Michelin Pilot, Pilot Sport 4S's. The factory car actually comes on 295's in the rear. We just have them on square. It's not that much of a change, but certainly it's not the perfect car to use. Um, I'm actually surprised it's so inefficient compared to this and the Taycan. Taycan also has a big advantage because it doesn't have a glass roof. Um, Anna's car is specced with the solid roof, and I think that's helping Ryan a lot, actually. So, um, yeah, really interesting. I, I think all of this just comes down to extreme heat and lots of AC load. Now, I'm running the car as warm as I feel comfortable, uh, but still lots of airflow in with the fan. I have it set to about 70 degrees on auto, and um, yeah, wow. Did not expect the Model S to be the least efficient. I expected the Taycan to be the least efficient, but it's not by like quite a bit. Quick efficiency numbers on the Model S in St. George. So we are averaging 355 watt hour per mile, approximately 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Kyle and Ryan are getting way better efficiency as autopilot is just freaking out here because of this lane. How is this still not figured out? Come on, autopilot, let's go. Also, this zone is not 65 here. It is 75 miles an hour. Um, so Ryan is getting 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour and Kyle is getting 3.5. Wow, so Model S really not efficient today. We're gonna bump our speed up 80 miles per hour. Love the state of Utah for that. Let's get going here. We've got lots of ground to travel showing 8% state of charge arrival in Beaver, Utah. And then on our way still after that to Green River, all is looking great. Again, if we do a deeper charge, no worries. It's not the end of the world. Things are going well so far on the trip. Colton just texted me that his efficiency has dropped from 350 watt hour per mile to 233 watt hour per mile, and we've been going uphill. And I'm like, that's not possible. I've lost efficiency. I'm at 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. What, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't know, call Elon. I'm like, send me a picture. <laughs> he, he has the car in kilometers because he wants to go, you know, 86 indicated on autopilot, which that's the kilometer trick. And he was looking at watt hour per kilometer, not watt hour per mile. <laughs> we were all like, what is Model S doing? Now we know, nothing out of the ordinary, everything is as predicted. We are climbing big time. Here we are cruising along, of course, just sitting at 86 miles an hour, doing a fairly steep climb in 100 degree heat. No issues, AC's working great. All the cars, you know, this is not really that hard in an electric car. I guess a lot of people worry about EVs and heat. You need to be like, I'm more worried about them in the cold than the heat. These things don't care really about the, the warmth. They have great thermal management for their battery packs. Just don't buy an old leaf if you live in a hot environment. Everything else, fair game. In the Taycan, and uh, things are going well. We've got a massive buffer uh, going into Cedar City, 28% it's saying, up from 15 when we started. However, I just did some double checking. It looks like two units are out of order according to the Electrify America app. The other two, a 150 and 350, say they're online. However, there was a plug share check-in uh, yesterday evening where two were down, one was limited to like 40 kilowatts and one was limited to 100 kilowatts. So instead, I think I'm gonna try to stretch it to Beaver. I know I spent a long time explaining about how this is a better plan. And I think, uh, honestly, if the chargers were working, I would still go with this. And I think it would be uh, slightly preferable. Plus I kind of got a pee. But uh, the reality is those chargers aren't, uh, don't seem to be working perfectly. Uh, I know at least three of the ones in Beaver where I went to yesterday and waited in line are working. So I think I'm going to uh, just reroute over there. I'll, I'll show you guys that route guidance shortly. And there it is. It's another about 40 miles down the road uh, and it says we'll arrive with 4% state of charge. That's uh, not too bad. I, I like a little bit more buffer personally, but I think that's plenty. And this has been very um, conservative so far today. Uh, so it might continue growing, but we'll see. Uh, I think regardless, I should be able to make it. Worst case scenario, I can slow down a little bit. But yeah, that's the new plan. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we're being blinded. 
right here by this, uh, this, the sun's up here somewhere and it's just major reflection. So I've conveniently put this rag here, but then it blocks my air conditioning. So I don't know what to do, be blind or be hot. I gotta choose. I, I don't know which one's worse. We are passing through Cedar City. I got stuck in a little just like slow moving traffic. So the guys are up, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a mile ahead half a mile ahead and uh, Ryan was saying that the Cedar City charger here wasn't looking good uh, but that's okay because we still have 46% state of charge and we do have a slight tailwind but the elevation gain coming out of Vegas means our efficiency is just in the toilet compared to what this car can do um, but just wait for that last charge once we crest the I-70 uh, Eisenhower tunnel and we come down into Denver man we could probably crest the hill with zero percent and still make it back to Windsor. Actually not, but probably not far off. Well, we had uh, a little fun back there. So a truck literally tried to run me off the road. There was that big, um, it was a wide load up there. And then there was another truck that I was going to pass here. I was on his rear end and the other truck moved over and he started to move over, but then went back over. He hesitated, so I went for it and he just came right over and he put me in the shoulder. I hit a tire. Um, I think we're okay. The only thing the car's coming up with here, it's telling me that there is lane departure avoidance reduced and steering assist required steering may be um, slightly more effort. So I don't know if we knock something loose. The car seems okay. Checking tire pressures here. Um, tire pressure in the rear is a little high, which it was doing yesterday, but front looks okay. Um, I can see the cameras here. Let me pull this up. Cameras looked fine. I was thinking, oh, maybe it knocked the side camera off. I really had nowhere to go. And there were people, you know, somewhat behind me. I couldn't just jam on the brakes. That would have been a rear end collision or something. So that was super fun. Autopilot is completely knocked off right now. Um, I don't know. We'll check it out at the supercharger. Hopefully we didn't do any damage. This car just seems to love finding, uh, yeah, not so fun pieces, but we kept our shiny side up, which is important. Uh, so curious to see if we have any damage on the front end of the plaid here, but, uh, yeah. Oh boy. You join me now in the Lucid as we're getting closer to the I-70 turnoff. Uh, the car I've just, uh, we're still 91 miles away but I've now set it to uh, basically recalculate and it's no longer putting in that charge stop that we needed. So it's showing a 13% arrival. I'm going as fast as I can. We want to use as much energy on that initial leg, basically get as far as we can at the fastest speed. So hopefully we can get a good charge and stick ahead of the guys because we are almost, Ryan's going to get off up here in Beaver and then we are almost completely ahead. Uh, what I am going to do now, now that the we have extra energy, we have 13% buffer according to the car, and um, we are no longer going to the other location, the Beaver location in the trip planner. I am gonna go here to, to the car, to charging, this one, and we are gonna do smart preconditioning. So now it should automatically precondition the battery pack for the DC fast charger that's in the navigation. And uh, fingers crossed, that's all good. That's exactly what we wanted to see. And, we have 68 extra miles to burn. Again, this thing charges really fast down low, so I'd rather get all conditions right for a fantastic charging session so we can get as much juice as possible and stretch it all the way to Grand Junction from Richfield. It's a long stretch, but it's the only way we're gonna win this thing. Dealing with some serious wind, it's kind of coming from the side here, but look at this trailer sway here. This is one thing I really don't like here about this uh, speed limit challenge, as I just realized I was slightly under. It's very hard to pass these trucks here sometimes. And that's exactly how I got into that situation. Guy, I guess, didn't see me or thought he was the bigger one, which he obviously was. Off the highway we go here, and we are going left to the Beaver Supercharger. So it shows 20 available out of 24. So four Teslas, give or take here. We'll see once it updates and we get in here. Quick little stop sign here. Boom, let's go. We got to plug in. Yeah, there's definitely more than uh, 20 spaces available or not more than 20 spaces available. Lots of cars plugged in over here. 
So I think we're gonna go over here by this Model S. Come scooting into the parking lot here. Yep, and these are all V3s here. This is a great stop. So I'm gonna take this end spot here. Boom. Back her on in. Boom. Out we go, 8% we arrived with. Plugged in. Here we go. So again, as I learned yesterday, the plaid takes slight bit of time to taper upwards here. Um, let's see what we're at right now. So it kind of sits here at 145 or so. And then all of a sudden, Kyle says about 90 to 100 seconds later, it will taper up, give us the full juicy juice. 241, 247, 250 good to go. All right, I'm going to go run inside. Let's check out. In the Taycan, getting pretty close to Beaver. It looks like we'll pull in with 7% state of charge, which is great. Uh, it's plenty fine. I did not have to slow down. Uh, there was a, like a little bit of uh, traffic where I couldn't quite go speed limit plus five. It might have been like plus three or something. So 83 instead of 85. But for the most part, I was able to keep that uh, speed limit up or speed limit plus five. Uh, and uh, once we get there, I can show you guys all the uh, trip efficiency and all that stuff. Welcome to Beaver. Colton just plugged in the Model S there. I just got the notification. He knifed through traffic slightly better than me. Ryan is also there. They are both at eight. Well, Ryan is, uh, I forget exactly where the EA station is, but somewhere. They're both at 8% state of charge. We are at 33% state of charge. So still significant range in the Lucid, but it doesn't seem as big of a disparity as I saw on the way out. Um, Either way, we are still continuing long at five over the speed limit. We have another 61 miles, another hour of driving to go before we get to our destination. And the Lucent thinks we're gonna arrive there with 77 miles left in the tank and we're preconditioning. So that's where the big range of this car, ooh, 80 mile an hour speed limit, let's juice it up. Um, we can go 86 indicated, boom. So that's where the Lucid really is gonna win here, is this is, we need to take the most advantage of this extra stretch as possible, and then, uh, you know, hopefully eliminate charging, because that could be a disaster. Hopefully Ryan's getting a good charge. Ultimately, we wanna see the best the other cars can do. I have both cars in my app, so I can monitor them and keep an eye on what's going on. But um, we are now in the lead in the Lucid, officially, hashtag winning. All right. We are in Beaver. We got an F-150 Lightning. Sweet. I'm gonna plug in and uh, I just wanna give a general apology to everyone who watches this video and this specific section because you can't see anything when I'm trying to do this with one hand. And I can't even do it with one hand usually. All right, two hands it is. Okay, we're plugged in. Cool, we should be connecting now. Let's take a quick look at some efficiency stats. Oh boy, can't see a thing. There it goes. Okay. 222 miles, three miles per kilowatt hour, as you can see. Now, uh, it is authenticated. We got some gray here, meaning that it is connecting, but not charging quite yet. And the Electrify America charger, of course, is uh, doing the little spinny thing. Ooh, green, yay. Now, will we get good speeds though? We should. Um, okay, 111. Takes a second for it to refresh. There it goes, all right. I'm getting full speeds. I don't have much time, so I'm gonna go bathroom, fill up my water bottle, maybe get some uh, Red Bull or something, and I'll be back in just a few minutes.
So just went inside. We're still pulling good power, 200 kilowatts here. Again, we're gonna skip Richfield. We're at minus 14% state of charge to get to Green River. So we've got a little time here. Let's check out the front of the plaid. So everything's looking good. Camera's on here. Now I did feel this bumper earlier. Let me see if I can do this. And the whole thing is moving. So we definitely broke something here for sure. Um, this doesn't seem right to me, but no, like, yeah, you can see the whole bumpers moving here. Huh. Well, that side kind of does it the same as well. I think we may be slightly unscathed here. I don't see any parts underneath broken. Yeah, looking pretty good. So let's jump inside. I'm gonna keep the AC on here. I should have turned it off, but it is so flipping hot here. And we're doing a reasonably deep charge. So let's see, Green River, 185 miles away. We're still at a minus 10%. I think I'm gonna give myself about seven or 8% we're gonna pull out of here. So probably another 18% pulling around 60 or so. I think that should be pretty good. I walked in, went to the bathroom, washed my hands, filled up my water bottle. There was a line, so I didn't even bother uh, trying to get some something because we're already at 30%, 31% state of charge. And let's see how much we need to get to Salina. It says we'll already get there with 2% state of charge. I'm gonna sit tight for a little. I'm going to take a quick look on PlugShare, I'll try America, see what Salina is up to. So I thought I'd share with you a little bit. In Salina, we've got, it says four out of four are working, one of the 350s is in use. However, I do know yesterday, one of the 350s was uh, stuck on the idle screen. I also know that I only pulled about 110 kilowatts uh, there, and Kyle had some pretty bad uh, signet surge. So I'm, not super eager to leave with these charging speeds. So what I'm thinking is I'll probably just stay plugged in for a little bit and once I taper below, I guess like 175 or so, which is what I would get on the 175 if everything works. Um, I think once I taper below that, I'll unplug and head on over because these are great charging speeds and it is far from a guarantee that I will see those again in Salina. All right, charging under where we should. I was just on the phone with Kyle. He said, handle's too hot. Gotta, gotta wrap it with a wet towel here. So let's get this thing chilled down a little bit. See if this helps. I did turn off the AC inside as well. The bottom of the connector all the way up. See if that helps at all. We're at 110. Again, I think it makes more sense to stay here longer than risk Richfield. Look at this station. We've got a bunch of cars out here. If they are headed with me and do end up stopping in Richfield instead of going to Green River, I'm gonna be screwed. So we are just gonna wait here. Let's see how this goes here. Yeah, we're still at 108. So uh, probably should have wrapped that earlier. I'll make sure I do that in Green River the whole There we go. Battery preconditioning just kicked on about 45 minutes away from the charging station but the Lucid is doing its thing. And so very cool, it came up with the message that automatically happened, I didn't do anything. So nice to see that software improvement here and uh, hopefully it means even better charging experiences. So again, some of you that may be questioning why I'm still sitting here stuck at 104 kilowatts, the next station we could go to is Richfield. It is a 150, only four stalls. Kyle said he really has never gotten more than 90 kilowatts. So. I think this is the right move. Um, still wrap the handle, didn't seem to help much. I'll have it ready to go when we hit Green River. We're at a 3% buffer right now. This is gonna be a pretty tight one, I would think, because I'm kind of averaging right around 300 total miles on a charge on this. 
um, at optimal, right? So that would be flat. Yesterday, of course, we chewed through the battery pack coming here from Green River. Lots of elevation, lots of weather, lots of rain. So I'm hoping we're gonna be okay there. We started at 90. Man, this is gonna be an interesting route. I tell you what, I hope this route planner is uh, really taking into consideration the elevation because I'm kind of just going on a guess here. Okay, went in, grabbed a Red Bull, and we're down to 157. So uh, yeah, I think that's fine. I'll stop it here. What's crazy to me is, uh, you got those stats right there, 13 minutes is a quote unquote longer charging session. I could have unplugged way sooner. Now, I used to own a Chevy Bolt and uh, that just was not the reality with that vehicle. Oh. And uh, I now own a Model 3, which is a lot closer to this reality, but uh, not, not quite this lightning fast. So it's about, I think a hundred, like a mile on, sorry hour and 10 minutes or so to get to Salina. So I'll drop that in and we can get started. Oh, look at that. Hour and eight minutes, 78 miles. So numbers aren't going up as much as I'd like. Still showing a 3% buffer in Green River. We're at 63% state of charge, still charging at 104 kilowatts. Man, I hope this is the right move. This one could have made or break the race for the plaid here. I just, in my mind, if that Richfield one is clogged, if, you know, I'm going to get less than this, um, and it takes time to get on and off the highway. So I just feel like while we're juicing up, it makes more sense to just chill here, get 104 kilowatts. I know it's not ideal. The only other option would be to stop in um, Salina and CCS charge. To me, I just want to go on the Tesla network. Again, I think it would be very silly to make this whole video Tesla basically versus other long range CCS cars and have the infrastructure let us down like it probably always will. So we're at 65%. This hasn't moved here. Um, let's just recalculate it one more time. So Supercharger Green River. This is telling us it wants to stop in Richfield and do a 10 minute charge. Then we get to Green River with 19%. Whoops, let's remove all charging stops here. Green River still 3%. While well, we've been here a little longer than I would have liked, we're at 3% getting there, we're at 70%. I think it's time. Let's risk it here. Let's unplug, get the wet rag off, unlock, hook up the charger. Let's rock and roll here. So it's saying stay below 80 miles an hour to reach destination. Okay, can do. We're just gonna kinda have to play it by ear. Again, we can always go slower. Our last charging opportunity is in Salina at a CCS charger if we absolutely can't make it. We're already up to 7%. I knew this route planner was wrong. So that may be good because we can just go full speed all the way. We'll see how this adjusts though. Let me get my seatbelt on, we'll get on the road. Just cruising in the Taycan, blue sky, blue car. Things are going well. I'm really pleased with how that stop in Beaver went. Uh, of course, saw those peak speeds, well over 250 kilowatts and 13 minutes to gain, uh, what, like 60% state of charge is crazy. Awesome stuff. And uh, on the way to Salina. So it's a pretty straightforward leg, just, you know, not even 100 miles here. And I don't think it's even 80 miles actually. But once we get to Salina, that's gonna be a deeper charge because I wanna skip Green River because of, uh, that was a mess yesterday. I don't wanna do that again. Good, I think you beat me out of the charger. Are you already gone? Yep. I just passed EA right now. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So wow. where, All right. where, where are you, you going Salina next? Maybe or no? no, I'm going straight to Green River. Oh shit, all right, good shit. Yeah, so. Um, it's saying 9% I'll arrive in Green River. I uh, didn't have the greatest stop. It was a little longer. 
Um, Kyle told me to wrap the handle midway through, so I'm gonna do that next time. I also forgot to turn my AC off, of course. Um, yep. So, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, so you're gonna do a deep charge in Salina then? That's right, I actually did a somewhat deep charge in uh, Beaver there, got up to a 60 something percent, 68. Nice, okay. I, I had a 350 working, so I was like, all right, I'll just take it while it's working. <laughs> okay. How long ago did you leave that station? Um, 10, 12 minutes ago, not that long ago. Okay, I'll try and see. Tell me your next mile marker and I'll see how far behind you I am. Let's see, uh, I will let you know. 121. Okay, I'm coming up on one right now. So I am at 114, so I am seven miles behind you. Okay. And I'm Sweet. and I'm going straight to Green River. Well, we might if uh, if the infrastructure works. Yeah, if you have a good charge in Salina, I don't know. I'll be curious to see when we get to Green River because um, I've got to do somewhat of a deep charge there at slower speeds to get up to pal uh, parachute. Right. So it'll be interesting. All righty, sir. Yeah, the wet rag super important for the V2 is not as much for the V3s, is my understanding. That's kind of what I always thought too, but Kyle was like, no, you should have wrapped that. And I'm like, okay. Oh, V3 too. I, I guess. I don't know. I had always heard it was only on the V2s. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, probably it won't hurt. <laughs> I mean, it is 95 degrees outside. We are only about 30 miles away from our charging stop and I just got the news that Colton is already back on the road and I believe Ryan is back on the road as well. I don't know who pulled out first, but it seems like it's a really close run. My estimation is Colton probably slightly overcharged, um, but if you're gonna overcharge, this is kind of the stretch to do it because you have these huge elevation variances and weather can roll in. And yeah, Colton almost got stranded yesterday on this stretch, running the Model S all the way out to 0%, which is how to do it. That's out of spec style. So um, yeah, Model S, maybe Colton got a few percent in, but I think they're actually going to overtake us while we are charging. And then hopefully we can get them back by eliminating a charging stop. So I don't know, we'll see, but this is definitely gonna be a pretty close race and a lot closer than yesterday was where the Model S just hammered by everyone. Let's hope our charging goes well. And here we are, we're coming up to one of the most exciting parts of this, uh, I guess, Western leg of this the trip. Here it is, our merging from I-15 to I-70. Here we go, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Let's go! Damn, what a rush. Wow. Okay, well, another few hundred miles, let's go. Well, Tesla Route Planner is having a heyday over here. So we were at 10%, it went down to 5%, went back up to 7%, now we're at 3%. So this gasometer is really hard to judge. Um, again, yesterday, leaving Green River, it told me, wow, those were some big old rumble strips there. Green River told me I was gonna arrive in Beaver, Utah with 2%, and I actually ended up getting there with much, much more than that. So we'll keep an eye on this. This thing, just before I started recording this clip, came up with the do not exceed 80 miles an hour to reach your destination. Now it's 75 miles an hour. This thing's all over the place. So not super concerned with that yet. I think once we get closer, we can really ramp down the uh, speeds if we absolutely have to. This is why it's so tricky because I felt like I overcharged it. Now I'm kind of feeling like I'm somewhere in the middle. I think we'll make it, but it's gonna be like slightly tight. So I don't know. So just up ahead right there is our exit, exit 37. We have 17% state of charge. Just driving along here at uh, typical speeds. Uh, we did have some construction zone where I got stuck behind a truck, but I'm thinking the other guys will as well. Sometimes you just can't do anything. I mean, ultimately we'll get slowed down, they'll get slowed down here or there, but we do our best to maintain, you know, five over GPS. So here's our exit. It's uh, pretty far off the highway where we're going. 
Uh, it almost looks like two miles off the highway. Are you kidding me? Who would put a charging station two miles off the highway? But it's our re really our only option because the next charger down the road we can make it to with 17% or roughly could have made it to if we slowed down. But it's a signet. We would get 30 kilowatt charging and have these big surges and only at small times get a good session. And then the next one after that is Green River, which we had a two hour line yesterday just uh, out of pure craziness because there's only one charger operational at maximum. So this is our best option. We got to eat the 1.3 miles off the highway. Absolutely insane. Let's hammer over there. We can go 50 and a 45. There we go. Um, dang. But I think it's going to be worth it because, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get there. As we're just about to pull into the Walmart up here, my understanding is that, at least according to the Electrify America app, station number two is a 350 kilowatt station that should be online. The last one to use it on PlugShare has said that it only output 35 kilowatts, which indicates a cable cooling issue because that's when they typically you know, just limit to about 100 amps and that's the voltage of most cars. Although I have noticed this Lucid charge okay on some of those units where I don't know if it just ignores the cable cooling thing or the charger just gives the juice, but it's worth a try. The backup option is charger number one, which is only a 150 kilowatt charger. And that one says, uh, uh, everyone says that one works okay. The other two, pretty much not usable. Uh, one is Chatamo only, the CCS is dead on that unit. And then the other unit is, um, right, just completely offline. So we have two options. We're gonna give it a go. I can see them right now. Let's go do this thing. Okay, pulling in here. I can see the station is completely empty. That is great news for us to, if station number two doesn't work, so that's one we wanna try, charger one, charger two. It says it has limited output, but I just did one yesterday that says it has limited output. Also in the app, it doesn't say it has limited output, but let's go climate control off so we can get the fastest, all the cooling to the battery pack. Go, 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 go. Oh my gosh, they put the short cables on this thing. I think I gotta move the car forward. See, that one has the long cables, does it? I don't know. No, it should reach. What am I thinking? Open. Are these the long cables? They seem awfully short, but I think it will reach. Yes. That was a mind warp there. Sorry. Costing me time. In you go. All right. Now let's see what kind of charging power we get. If it doesn't work, I can plug in this station here and fingers crossed. That one is dead and that one is dead for CCS. So really not a very useful charging experience, but at least we shouldn't have any big surges with ABB. Cable cooling is on. Cable cooling is on. Contactors are clicking. Plug and charge working, initiating charging. Everything is looking good so far. Let's run in here. Let's see what we're gonna get for speeds. It says preparing to charge. We are charging. Time remaining. Okay, we're ramping. But we're amperage limited to 100 amps. So 73 kilowatts for this car would be 35 kilowatts for the other. So we need to move over to that one. Okay, quick swap and go. Uh, crazy that the fastest charging we can get here is, how do I even stop charging in this thing? Charging, stop, boom. <laughs> All the charging stations suck, but we need, we need a lot of juice here. So let's use the 150. Move the car, move the car, move the car. Come on. I could pull the cable over, but then we'd block this station. Battery preconditioning. Get into reverse. Let's go. Enter pin to drive. What the heck? Into reverse. There we go. Cameras fast. Nice. Backing up. Curb. Full throttle. Pulling in. Skirt. Just like this. Open the charge port. Go, go, go. Okay, this handle feels warm. It almost feels like someone was just charging on it. But here we go. We should get, you know, 175 kilowatts on the ABB 150s. Uh-oh, car just went red. It says, Authentic unplug and plug in again. Authentication error. Ha, huh. what the heck? Okay, we've unplugged. Come on, okay. Good, good, good. Let's go in, lift up. Can we work now? No key detected, my key's my phone, I'm right here. And Bluetooth is on. Connecting. Gosh, Colton could have added like how many kilowatt hours in this time period? 
This is why we need to skip a whole charging stop. And plug and charge failed. Let me activate with the app. Okay, plug and charge completely failed. We pulled up the Lucid app. It kind of knows when it fails. It gives you an Electrify America option. Hit charger number one, and then we are good to start charging. So what kind of speeds are we gonna get? Contactors are going, things are good. It's actually faster to use the Lucid app to activate than the EA app, that's pretty wild. And here we are getting maximum speeds we can get for this charger. So I'm gonna run in and use the restroom. I really gotta pee. And it's we're gonna do a deep charge here because we have to skip Salina, we have to skip Green River. Green River's full right now according to the app. There's no way we can go there. I'm not sitting in line for two hours and making this thing lose the race. I'd rather sit here and charge deep and at least charge rather than wait in line. So we're gonna sit here, juice up, and it's off to Grand Junction. It's a 300 mile stretch roughly. So we're gonna need, I don't know, 80%, something like that to get up to Grand Junction. In the Taycan on the way to Salina, uh, the predicted arrival uh, dropped by 1%, so it, it's looking pretty pretty good. Um, we're just passing Richfield, and I know Kyle is out here doing his charging. Um, he's charging up, he'll be doing a longer session uh, in order to get all the way to Grand Junction, like us. He has the luxury of going to these chargers in Richfield, while uh, he's actually only on a 150, they're ABB, so he doesn't have to worry about the signet surge, which may or may not affect uh, him and me as well. So, I don't have an option, I have to go to Salina. I wouldn't make it if I charged up here. Uh, I wouldn't be able to make it to Grand Junction, so it's uh, about 15 or so minutes till we get to Salina, and it'll be a long plug-in. We have now been here for 15 minutes and we have only delivered 39 kilowatt hours. We are now 40 kilowatt hours added. We need a little bit more. So we're at 53% state of charge. It's 240 miles to Grand Junction. Um, let's do those calculations and see when we can pull out because Colton and Ryan have passed me. So now I'm in last place, but I have more energy in the tank than they do. Um, Ryan's gonna have to stop in Salina. Colton's gonna have to stop in Green River. I can go all the way to Grand Junction. But again, that's far off the highway, like this one was. Um, considering we're plugged into a 150 kilowatt charger, the session so far has been perfect. It sat pegged at 175 or 180 kilowatts, all the way up to 35% state of charge, and then it just followed the internal charge taper, which is pretty brutal. We were doing only maybe 130 kilowatts around 50% state of charge, which is just like Lucid. You gotta push the batteries harder. I don't care about degradation. I want fast charging. Throw this thing away in a few years. Give me, you know, like Porsche, do a battery-friendly saving fast charging option, and then do a, hey, we're on a freaking race, charge this thing, make it melt it just needs to last another few hundred miles i'm obviously exaggerating but there should be some of that in this okay so let's think about when we need to leave 17 minutes in 43 kilowatt hours delivered we're only at 114 kilowatts which is just brutal so the lucid does not charge very well up top handles not super hot actually feels like about the same temperature from when we started in the car now it's not saying the charging station is the limitation. So this is exactly what the Lucid wants at this state of charge. I do have climate control off. I can hear the AC compressor ripping to cool. So everything is good. We need to put in the Grand Junction. Electrify America. There we go. Oh, only two of seven. So I need to make sure things are looking good. Real-time station information now with the new update. That's nice, but... Follow the road. Okay, don't talk. Manage. Wants us to go to Green River. We are not doing that. That would technically be the fastest, but Green River is currently full. Zero available. Not possible. Electrify America. So... Um, we still need a little bit more. It's 229 miles, but keep in mind the speed's high. We do have a tailwind. The elevation, we go up and then down, um, but we should have some buffer here. So I'll do some calculations. I think we're very close to being able to leave. I just want to double check. Well, this section is very bumpy in the plaid, holy smokes. So I'm still in uh, full sport suspension here. Get the dampening and rebound tightened up a bit. 
So a little update. Um, we're still cruising along here, 3% state of charge. Um, so we have 43% remaining in the pack. Now I'm using the little hack over here, doing kilometers an hour, if you know, you know. Um, we just passed Kyle in Richfield. I just talked to Ryan, he's about to charge, um, I believe in Salina, I think. Are we even, are we that close already to Salina? I don't remember, I guess so. Yes, we are. So he's a couple minutes from there. Good Lord, you can see how bumpy this thing is. Um, and I'm gonna be waving bye-bye to Ryan because I'm 5.3 miles behind him right now. So it did make up a little bit of ground on him. And uh, yeah, still plan is to go to Green River. I mean, I don't really have any other options. Um, Kyle said he's gonna be sitting at the EA back in Richfield which is two miles off the highway for probably another 25 minutes. This is about five minutes ago. So we're gonna get a good head start on him. I just think this uh, this Green River is kinda gonna screw us over here, being only a 150, doing somewhat of a deep charge, going uphill. Kyle is gonna go from Richfield there all the way to Grand Junction. Um, Grand Junction's been a spotty charger I believe, but uh, I know Kyle will definitely make that thing work. So this is going to get really, really interesting. And Ryan's going to be doing a super deep charge here. So as long as he gets a good charge, man, I'm kind of almost thinking the Model S today is going to come in last. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, here are some calculations. So far on this trip, we've averaged 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, far less than this car can do at lower speeds. But keep in mind, we have a relatively high highway speed, we're gonna be driving 80, 85. I can always go slower, but it's always faster to charge and then drive quickly. Maybe not at 100 kilowatts, but you know we're kind of right on that edge where we can do that. So I'm thinking uh, if we do 70% state of charge, uh, basically where we charge to, and we get three miles per kilowatt hour, we should easily be able to make it at there. So I'm thinking we need to charge less than 70. Let me do some more math, but that's my guess. Somewhere in between here and 70%. So we're getting pretty close to going and I want to because this is not a good charging speed. Well, I just did some math. If we do 110 kilowatt hours is what I've been basing this off of because there's gotta be some degradation off that 112 when this car was fresh. Keep in mind, all three of these cars have 12,000 miles on them now. So if we do 110 kilowatt hours, times 0.65 indicated 65% and then multiply that number it's mid 70 kilowatt hours you, you know usable times three miles per kilowatt hour which is sort of my worst case I know I can always get more than three miles per kilowatt hour but on some of these climbs this thing's at 1.8 1 1.9 1 and then I gain on the way down then we would just about make it so we're going to charge to 65% I really want to get out of here as soon as possible. Once we hit 64%, I'll crank on the AC, pull the extra cooling, you know, extra power requirement from the charger. And um, then we're going to get out of here as soon as we hit 65. So we're pretty close here. We're at 63% state of charge. We've been here 21 minutes. Feels like an eternity. Oh my God. The other guys are doing eight, nine minute charging sessions. 21 minutes. And we had to fiddle around, which really didn't help much at all either. So... Here we are, 63%. Come on, baby. Let's kick on cooling. We'll go 72 on auto. The AC compressor has to spin down. It has to revamp where the coolant's going. That's why I charge with the system off. Now it's spinning back up. And yep, we're pretty close to getting the heck out of here. So AC seat on, climate control on, seat adjustment in progress. That's interesting. So now it has easy entry. Okay, does that actually work? No, <laughs> maybe I need to configure it. All right, 64, come on, one more, baby. One more, and then we're out of here. 65% state of charge, and it is slowing down, so that was absolutely perfect. Charging, stop charging, we added 204, does it tell me how many kilowatt hours? 54.6 kilowatt hours delivered. What made it into the battery? I don't know, doesn't matter. Let's get the heck out of here. So the big, the big thing for me is, Ryan's gonna be in Salina, you know, up the road in no time at all now. So we need to pass him before he unplugs. If we can't pass him before we unplugs, I think the Tycon might win this thing. 
or, or honestly the Model S. The race is anyone's right now. We have no idea what's going to happen here. I can't charge at any charging station past Grand Junction because they're all signets. And this car, like I keep mentioning, has signet surge and it takes that you know, 25 minute session we just had and elongates it to a 45 minute session or more. Uh, climate control is not working. AC is on. I don't know why. I thought I was going to cool it down on the charger, but it's just blowing hot air right now. Maybe it's trying to cool the battery pack. Great. Choose the battery over me. We got to win this thing. How the heck do we get out of here? Brake. No, this is a race. Everyone out of our way. What the heck? This way and then we bang a left at the light and then it's that long slog back to the highway. Oh boy. Let's go. Max efficiency mode. Go, 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 go. Don't break. <laughs> go. Okay, so line up. Let's see if we're... You do, yeah. Looks like we can plug in. Like I was interested, didn't know that Porsche makes EVs now. But let's plug it in real fast. Oh boy, how does Kyle do this? Jesus. All right, hands. I'm sorry. That's a two-handed job for me. It's uh, saying connecting on the screen. And we've got gray. Ooh, look how nice and dusty that is. I'll clean that off later. Connection successful or payment received or something along those lines. Something that I'd like to point out, um, Porsche's got really great thermal management systems and uh, logic. So I arrived here with 38%, which is a pretty high battery, and it is hot, 110 Fahrenheit. That is very toasty. It needs those higher temperatures to accept full speed um, at higher states of charge. So it was able to know that I was going to be arriving, and now it's charging, uh, with a higher state of charge, and I wanted to get good charging speed, so it heated it up appropriately. Oh no! We'll give it a few moments and we'll see what's going on. All right. Four kilowatts is not good. All right, swapping over. I'll join you shortly from inside the car once I'm moved over. Okay, we are getting very close to the highway. The air conditioning is just starting to cool down. I just heard the compressor really spin up now. So it's at max revs. And um, yeah, come on, baby, we gotta maximize. We need to get past Salina before Ryan unplugs. If we don't, because we're both going to Grand Junction, we'll lose out on the 350 kilowatt station and um, full send, sorry. Uh, had to <laughs> make sure we weren't gonna understeer to anything. Um, I forgot how <laughs> ungrippy these tires were. <laughs> we're on the aero tires. Speed limit's 85, I think, 80. We can go 86 here. Um, yeah, we need to get past Ryan. The, if, if Ryan unplugs before us, we're toast. There's no way around it. 85, 86, there we go, locked in. I think that was maximized as much as we could do. Damn, Electrify America, get your 350 kilowatt chargers in order. Uh, the other thing I need to do is the car still wants to go to Green River to charge, so I need to turn off smart battery preconditioning. So we got a lot of, lot of little settings to do and it's hammer down in the Lucid. Every traffic move, every lane change matters right now. Okay, we are going into, uh, this is the charger that I used yesterday, actually. Um, looks like it was a successful connection so far. We've got the gray, so it might take a moment. But again, yesterday, I think I only got 110 kilowatts out of this. Hypothetically, I should be able to get like 175, 180, maybe. Um, but that may not be in the cards. This Rivian is still charging. They've got, I said, another 10 or so minutes, so... If I don't have any good luck here, I might switch over when they leave. And now it's green. Okay, 114 kilowatts. All right, well, it's better than nothing, and uh, I'm sure I'll be able to plug in over there uh, when I get the chance. Here's stats for that uh, last leg. 76 miles, three miles per kilowatt hour. Not too bad. And um, again, 114 kilowatts right now is not ideal, but it's a hell of a lot better than nothing and I already put in the navigation 
Uh, let's see. It says we need another 44%, so it's wanting us to charge up to 85. So this is gonna be pretty close to a full charge for me. So I'll be here for a while. While I'm here charging for a while, I'm of course gonna grab something to eat, and I'm also gonna take advantage of this and paint off the windscreen. Some bugs on there. You know what this means. Awesome. Yeah, so Rivian should be moving soon-ish. And I'm actually not sure if uh, the 350 will be better or not. Uh, I know it's a problem with signets and these are all, four of them are signets. So I, I don't know if it'll actually be any better or not, but can't hurt to try. Well, things are not looking so great here in the plaid for right now. So just got a charging needed to reach destination warning. It has since gone away. We're going uphill now. This stretch is really challenging because we go up and down and up and down and up and down. So here's where we're at. I am at 31% state of charge with 94 miles to go, showing 1% arrival. Um, so what I'm doing now is just going slow, build myself up a little bit of a buffer to uh, hopefully make it. Um, a little concerned, we do have a big downhill outside of, or when we're coming into Green River, I have turned off climate control. I'm so glad I charged a little bit extra in uh, Beaver. Maybe should have topped up at Richfield. There was only two stations available there. Uh, this is gonna be a tight one, so I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see if we make it here. Kyle's, we did some calculations need to average around 300 watt hour per mile from three miles ago to reach the destination as they have cones literally in the middle of the road here so uh, this slow section will help us slightly um, yeah this will be very interesting so not a ton of range to work with this was a big gamble I was hoping I was gonna make it but man I am uh, a little stressed here to see if we can make it there I just got off the phone with Colton. He was saying that uh, he's dropping the speed down to like 60 miles an hour, somewhere around there, because trip planners freaking out about making it. And I was like, well, do some math. So I gave him, you know, basically his target watt hour per mile that he needs to hit in order to arrive. We are, um, yeah, we are doing okay, but I've shut off climate control because the speeds are so high, because the initial efficiency is so bad, this initial climb. Uh, I'm just building up as much buffer as possible here. I'm doing 80 instead of 85. Um, th this is probably the right compromise rather than sitting at that 80 kilowatt charge rate that it dipped to as soon as we unplugged. So this is the move. I'm gonna do what I need to do to get this car to Grand Junction with the least amount of battery percentage possible, but also still making it. Uh, it's all out of spec trip optimization the Lucid does not make it easy at all. Uh, unlike the Taycan, which gives you exact state of charge arrival, it'll tell you if you can't make it. There's no way to tell this car, I don't want to go to Green River and wait in line. I need to stretch it to this station. So I don't know if there's any other way, but uh, I'm doing my best and we're all uh, we're all loving it. Okay, there's Ryan charging up. Let's see if we can, yeah, there he is. We passed him. Woohoo! Yeah, I wonder if he heard the horn. This horn's pretty quiet. Um, Yes, we got out of, got past Ryan. Okay, and he is stretching it to Grand Junction. So as long as I can manage our speed to pull into Grand Junction first, then we can get the high power charger that's there. Cause I believe there's only one 350 kilowatt online and that will extend his charging times uh, because he has to do another stop probably in Edwards after to make it back. And so he, he's probably not gonna be at Grand Junction for as long as we will even on that single charger, but we have no option. We have to charge deeply because it's only signets after that. I am back at the charger and I'm getting 115 kilowatts. It's no longer surging. Um, yeah, 67%. We still need at least probably more than 20%. And the Rivian's just leaving, so I'll give it a shot. On, the on this installation of Ryan struggles to one-handed plug in a CCS vehicle, Maybe one of these days I'll get it. I'll just keep trying until it happens. Let's see. Does it count if I use my arm 
That was one hand, and you could probably see parts of that. Great work, Ryan. Thanks. And, hey, 150 kilowatts. That's a good bit more than uh, what the 150 right there was giving us. So, uh, it's still going up a little bit. Yeah, 159. I think that was a great move. I'm glad that I switched over. Now, I still need 15%. I'm gonna go pick up some food, go to the bathroom, all that fun stuff. And um, I do want to give myself a nice buffer. This is a three hour drive and I don't wanna be sweating the whole time worried about range and this and that and I mean if it's if it's charging at like 10 kilowatts I'll, I'll unplug and get out of here but 149 is pretty solid let's get some food so quick update here from the plaid so we have built up a little bit of buffer um, I am still really having a hard time trusting this number though it has changed so substantially much today uh, but we did just come off of a summit. We are now on the downhill, so I am getting some regen here. But I have lowered the speed to make sure we get it there. I want to actually get there. I, if we have more energy, great. But once we get closer within a couple of miles, we'll start again boosting up the speed. But I've got it set at 60 right now, so we have 24% to travel 75 miles. Wanted to share the charge curve with you a little bit. So at about 80%, I dropped down to 85-ish kilowatts, and uh, it's still going, 70 kilowatts, 71 kilowatts. It's, uh, it's better than my Bolt, even at peak speeds, which is nice. But uh, I am starting to get that feeling of just sitting and waiting for the charger. Now, of course, we've got this very long leg all the way to Grand Junction. The only bailout is Green River, which I want to do everything I can to avoid. So I want to give myself a good little buffer, uh, make sure I can get there comfortably, and uh, maintain that speed limit plus five. So a lot of it is uh, 80 mile per hour speed limits, but not all of it. I'll probably uh, charge for a little bit longer, just to make sure I've got plenty of charge left, uh, or plenty of buffer rather and then we'll get going. So in order for us to make it in the Lucid, we're 50 miles in roughly. We need three miles per kilowatt hour. We are at 2.3, but we just crested at over 7,000 feet of elevation. And that was the, the highest point of this drive. So it's literally all downhill from here. I mean, we have some ups and downs, but we will be ending at 2,000 feet of lower elevation than we are right now. So fingers crossed this thing will work. We're actually right regening right now putting some energy back into the battery pack. So let's hope I didn't overdo it on the initial stretch, but we're gonna work to get that back up to three miles per kilowatt hour by the time we get to Grand Junction. Otherwise, we just won't make it. So I don't wanna drop speed yet. I just wanna see what the elevation plays out. Here's those charging stats for you. Just starting to hit about 50 kilowatts. I think I'm happy with the amount of buffer I have. So let's unplug it. I'll be honest, in a race, that what felt excruciatingly slow. Um, so slow. And that's not even counting the, whatever, like 12, 13 minutes on the other charger. Ugh, not ideal. But we've got charge and let's get going. Back on the road, I had a ham and cheese multi-grain sandwich. It was adequate. But things are looking good on the way to Grand Junction. Well, it didn't take very long. We are at lower elevation, about where we're gonna end up in Grand Junction. We are at three miles per kilowatt hour. Everything is looking good. Still maintaining pretty good speed. Colton was freaking out. He couldn't make it to Green River in the Model S, but I just did some math and I'm like, you can do 340 watt hour per mile to make it. That's 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Like we can send it, dude. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what's got him freaked out. Maybe trip planner saying he can't make it or something, but all the data points to him making it there just fine. So I'm not sure why, uh, why the cause for alarm up ahead. Either way, I said, if you run out, I'll come behind and push you with the Lucid. <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, he should make it just fine according to, unless he gave me wrong numbers, but all the numbers I got, I'm like, yeah, you could do like 85 and you'll make so it. So I think we're looking pretty good here. Again, once we're past that big climb, we are going for it. Autopilot, what are we doing in this lane? It is just like bouncing and weaving. Also, this is the dude that nearly ran me off the road and he was just flying by me at like 85 miles an hour. So that's super fun. This guy's an amazing driver to whatever company you have here. Maybe uh, need a better driver. Bright drops, <laughs> electric vans going out for delivery back there. That's awesome. Back up to full speed now, 85 miles an hour indicated. We did enough, uh, definitely lost a ton of time on that. It kind of is what it is, unfortunately. So 16% remaining, 50 miles right on the nose. Now Tesla is saying 2%. So it's going all over the place. This is gonna get really tricky uh, going into parachute because we do have another climb and I am just not even sort of trusting the system today. Maybe the system is having more trouble because we're going more uphill today, but I don't know. Just to me, like that clip I just recently showed of this is what we're traveling and then all of a sudden it's just uh, like, yeah, here's 5% less range. Like what is going on? So we are making our last climb into Green River and basically we are almost downhill from here. So I have cranked up the speed. We have 15% remaining, 48 miles left. Tesla is claiming we're gonna get there at 2%. So we would never have made it had I just had my speed going as is. So now I do understand we are going faster and that does eat up more energy but this route planner today has just been a freaking nightmare as we have a nice RAV4 blocking traffic here going 67 and an 80. How wonderful isn't that? So uh, anyways, should make it to Green River, no problem here. But yeah, this has been a really challenging stretch. I'm glad I put as much energy in as I did. Um, I guess maybe should have topped up in Richfield, but yeah maybe like a five minute charge there and we wouldn't have had to slow down at all. So that may have been the move. I don't know, but uh, Kyle is definitely hot on my tail now. He's gonna be going straight to Grand Junction and I gotta stop in Green River at a slow 150. A Neptune Blue Tycon just going the other way. What the heck? Ryan, are you turned around and going backwards? <laughs> That freaked me out. I'm like, why is Ryan going the other way? But no, it's just a different Neptune Blue Tycon. Pretty sweet. So it's a bit rainy. The road's wet, kind of hard to see. Really big raindrops. No idea if you can hear me, but these are the conditions. It does seem like the rain only started uh, pretty recently because the road's not totally wet. And we have crested the last hill. You can see it's all downhill from here. One of the most beautiful stretches of American Highway. I always say that, but my phone background is actually a picture overlooking this highway somewhere just over here. It's really gorgeous. Uh, we, are, uh, we are at 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour, but keep in mind higher elevation. We need to average roughly three and a half miles per kilowatt hour from this point on. Uh, and I believe that's possible. We'll get this up to three miles per kilowatt hour. Again, we've already done 87.3 miles. We have another 138 left to go. We're at 36% state of charge, which means we have roughly 41 kilowatt hours in the tank. Let's freaking hammer this thing. I think we got it in the bag. Colton really slowed down and miscalculated here. I don't know though, because it still looks like he's arriving at Green River at single digits. As long as he can drain all the energy out of the plaid, and put as much in as quickly as possible. If it was a version three, I'd be a little bit more worried, but it's only a version two supercharger in Green River. So fingers crossed we can make it. This is my phone background. I went right up there to the view area and got an awesome shot of the highway. 
right down through here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. A little bit of sprinkles of some rain here, noticing some sporadic clouds. Nothing unusual for this area for the middle of summer. We're up to 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, but I cannot go any faster than this. We, <laughs> I would like to, but we're at the maximum speed. We're at five over the speed limit. Again, the plus one for speedometer compensation. Actually, we can do plus two. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, that's 65. Aha, uh -huh. look at us optimizing every last bit. I got the window cracked. This is actually full open. When I feel okay, I kind of open it just like that much. So I'm reducing the arrow drag on the car. Really trying to optimize everything possible here because we're about to pass Colton and he doesn't even have, uh, he hasn't even charged yet. I don't think he's plugged in yet. And we are uh, maybe 20 miles away from Green River, 10 miles, something like that. He's only a few bends up. So the Lucid might have this thing unless we run into a charging issue in Grand Junction. I don't know, we might beat the Model S, which would just be crazy because the Model S beat us by three hours yesterday. But again, that was all down to charging infrastructure. So, damn, the race to Vegas is heating up. Ryan's not too far behind either. It is hammer down in the Lucid right now. I'm pegged at 86 miles an hour indicated and uh, just got a call from Colton. He's rolling into Green River. I got confused and I guess I am maybe closer than I thought. But anyway, he said that the EA app just shows that Green River's empty. So that's huge news. Um, and we definitely left some time on the table if that's the case, but it wasn't worth the risk of waiting in line. But at least with Colton, he's gonna go by the EA station on the way to the supercharger. And if that one stall with that one cable is available, then he can pull in and he can get more power than at the supercharger. And even if he doesn't get the full 210, 212, 215 kilowatts, 500 amps that the charger can output to the plaid, he's still gonna probably get better than 72 kilowatts, which is what it sounds like the other, like the supercharger is gonna give him since it's an old version two and, and it's almost full. There's only three spaces available, which means that you'd probably have to power share. So if he can get 150 kilowatts or greater, in Green River, he's actually faster using the CCS network and he has the supercharger as a backup. That could really put a mix into the story. Pretty epic, because the EA app's been showing it's full all day. So pretty cool that he's able to go there and uh, juice up. We, uh, we're still gonna pass him and go to Grand Junction, which is annoyingly off the highway, but the race is on. I mean, we need to keep optimizing. I still have AC off. I'm chugging along best I can. I probably could make it there with AC at max speed right now, but noticing some clouds up ahead and I don't know what the weather's gonna do up there. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed we can pull it off in the Lucid. Uh, Colton might have uh, struck gold there with the EA. We don't say that very often but there are times at which they're better than the superchargers, and this could be so one of them. rolling into Green River, 1% state of charge here. Now, I'm gonna attempt to charge on the EA charger. Why? Because there are three chargers over here available at Tesla. I just looked on the EA app, it shows nobody's there. If I can plug in, get some more juice, oh my God, that would be amazing, and that would really make this an interesting race for me. Pulling up now, this isn't looking too good. There is a Rivian here. Ah, oh, charging on it. Dang it, not gonna work. Alrighty, well, that kind of seals the fate for the Model S. So we're gonna go charge at 72 kilowatts. Ah, what a day. All right, well, is what it is. Uh, I guess we're staying on Tesla infrastructure, so off we go here. So rolling over to Tesla now, looks like there is four available. So hopefully we can pick one that is not shared and I'm seeing more and more spaces open. And we gotta make sure we pick the right one because this is really confusing here with how they have them labeled. Hard to see what car is plugged in where to which one, who's sharing. And I see another Model Y rolling in right now. So I think I'm gonna take the one right here next to the Model X, right? Yeah, so 2A, 2B. All right, so we're gonna go 2B here. Hello, open. In we go. Wrap the handle. 
and let's put some juice in the plaid. So arrived at 1% state of charge here. Goodness sakes, that was brutal. <laughs> it showed originally 10% and we had to do everything to get here and not run out of juice. Insane. So last charge, we did 334 watt hour per mile. Actually pretty decent for this. Uh, and we are currently ramping up here. 146 kilowatts, we've got it wrapped on the uh, on the handle. So we're gonna sit here a while. I'm gonna need to, uh, I'm gonna rest for a little bit, go to the bathroom, get situated, and then I need to figure out how much juice we need. We are passing Green River right now, and um, we'll see if we can actually see Colton. He should be just up over there driving. He said he took a quick buzz. We just got a message from him past the Green River coffee shop over there and said uh, that there was a Rivian using the one charger that he needed. The other charger is limited to like 35 kilowatts output, 100 amps, so not worth that. So he's gonna go to the supercharger. Hopefully, fingers crossed, he can find a spot that is not power shared. For the Lucid's case, let's hope that the version two supercharger hinders him uh, because uh, once there's someone on 1A, if he plugs into 1B, he'll have to split the power. And uh, I gotta say, Tesla really needs a version three supercharger here in Green River that loves in the mirror back there that would be the perfect place for one. Um, also because the version two charger here won't work with the NAX cars. They need to put a version three to speak CCS communications. Anyway, we are passing Green River. I don't know if I've ever done this before. I've always stopped in Green River. I'm not too far from Green River and just got through a pretty big rainstorm. It was raining quite hard, big raindrops, uh, making it pretty tough to see and a ton of standing water. I made some comments in, uh, from yesterday about how well it stood in the rain and it did not feel steady. I slowed it way down, way, way down, uh, under 60 and I, it was, took a lot of focus. It was, it was a little hairy, but we got through, we're safe. Um, it used a, a couple percent of our buffer, but still projecting 9% uh, arrival in Grand Junction. So we'll keep going. Hopefully that'll be, uh, most of the weather and there's still some raindrops coming down here and there but hopefully we're through the thick of it since we just passed green river here in the lucid i just put in let's go to grand junction and it wants us to charge all the way down in moab i'm fairly certain this charger's offline in moab like a completely dead charger in moab and then come back up and over this is dumb what it should say is you can make it to grand junction just watch your speed because this is so stupid. So I'm surprised even after this big software update that the trip planner is still this unusable and there's no way to delete this out of the car. Um, yeah, pretty pretty stupid actually. That, for such a technically advanced car, it needs a good route planner and this, this is gonna send people the complete wrong way. Okay, I've driven for roughly the past 100 miles without air conditioning. <laughs> it's getting toasty in here. Uh, the weather was actually fine up in the mountains, but once we dropped into the valley, temperatures drove up. So let's go AC on, well, let's turn the system on. Let's raise the temperature so it doesn't get like a massive request to start super low. Six, seven, eight, nine, seven, one, two, 72. And now we will kick on air conditioning. Okay, so everything should be good to go. Feeling much better in the cabin already with just some hot airflow and uh, hopefully this won't impact efficiency much, but we have 25% to do roughly 86 miles. I think we're gonna be fine. Um, whoops, need to be 86 miles an hour. Good thing the speed limit just changed. <laughs> yeah, I believe, eight, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure 86 is 85. But uh, yeah, we're close enough. Anyway, 25% uh, should get us to Grand Junction. We'll be there pretty low, but we have another 80 miles to do. Here in the Porsche Taycan, and we are passing the Green River exit. Thankfully, not taking it. Uh, Green River's over on our left, and that's where those chargers are. Uh, and I believe they have the same status with two down, one limited, and one working at full speed. So, very glad I don't have to deal with that. And we've got 55% state of charge, 9% predicted arrival. It's looking good. Another hour and a half or so till we get there. After we got through that rainstorm, it's been a, a pretty calm, easy drive. Well, it's a hot one out here. So 97 degrees, AC off. 
we're pulling 134 kilowatts at 56 percent so we now have to go to parachute and uh route planner is telling us we'd get there currently if we left at 56 percent um, and get there with minus five so we definitely need to charge more than that of course Guys, I can't even explain to you how different the system is reacting today compared to yesterday. Yesterday, it was so absolutely conservative. Um, and yeah, totally maximized it. Never thought I was not gonna make it to a charger. Green River was a push. So here's the mental math we have to do. We are now climbing up in elevation. It is only about a thousand feet, but it is just constant gradual uphill, basically from here in Green River to Parachute, where we're going to get a V3, which is awesome. So yesterday we left at this exact state of charge from Parachute to get to here, and we arrived with 1%. We were going 85 um, basically the whole way, except for in Colorado, where we are going, I guess, 80. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of thinking we need to be definitely a 10% buffer here. Um, again, we're going to try and get speed instead of, uh, you know, going slow like we just had to do. So I'm thinking we pull out around 67 to 69% and see where that leaves us. Um, we can always, again, the same thing we just had to do, turn down the car, get it not ripping so hard. Um, but yeah, I have a lot less confidence in this system now after what it just put me through. I mean, realistically, that was very, very frustrating. And uh, yeah, I, I think that may have ruined the race quite a bit for the Model S here. We've got another Model Y coming in. Please don't power share with us. We need all the juice. Excellent. So they're going to go over here to 1A. So we're still going to get our full juice at this state of charge. So I think we got a few more percent. We've got the handle wrapped here on the V2, trying to just get as much juice as possible. Cable is ultra hot too. So we're getting all the juice we can out of this old V2 here. Kyle is way past us. I think Ryan is getting close now to passing us or has passed us in the last five minutes. He's still got a charge in Grand Junction. I've got a charge in Parachute. So this is gonna be interesting. We're kind of gonna hop each other as we go here. So I think I'm gonna unplug here really shortly. So showing 6% buffer to get to Parachute, 143 miles. Just doing a bit of math here. On average at 66%, I think this car would do, I don't know, 190 miles on a flat road. Of course, we have elevation. Um, so I'm probably gonna unplug now. Let's jump on. And just for your knowledge here, showing I'm gonna arrive in parachute at 10%. So we'll see what it that actually ends up as. I am having PTSD from this darn system today. It's just, I, I'm so blown away with how different it's been today than yesterday. Yesterday, it was so conservative. And this, I feel like it's just underestimating things. Um, I do actually on this route think we'll have about 10%. Um, I knew that Beaver to Green River was gonna be a stretch, but I didn't think it'd be that much of a stretch what I left at. So yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know, what a day. We are very close to crossing into Colorado. We are at 10% state of charge, 31 miles left to go. I wonder if now the Lucid will figure out that we can actually make it. Just says no roots found last time I tried it. I've just been trying over and over. I really want to get it to precondition the battery. Let's see what it thinks. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. What does it say? Eight miles on arrival. Hey, eight miles is plenty. So let's go here. Let's go charging. Let's turn this on. Smart preconditioning. I wonder if it'll know not to precondition because it thinks we're going to get there so dead. Either way, we have it on. We're set to go. And uh, hammer down in a green river. Let's maximize this thing for every drop of juice that we can. Right now, Green River's fully open. There's no one at the station. I, I'm sorry, Grand Junction is fully open and no one is at the station. And that means we can get the 350 kilowatt. There's only one that is. Welcome to colorful Colorado. Hell yes. We have arrived. First to cross in the Colorado, Lucid Air, baby. 
We're also at very low state of charge, so let's hope the Tesla doesn't leapfrog us, although it's very possible. fairly low on charge, 6%. Very odd that now it says the manual preconditioning button is back. Look for charging station, but I thought it was auto preconditioning. This just popped up here. Let's start battery preconditioning. There we go. 6% state of charge to do 17 miles elevation, 100 feet higher than where we're ending with a slight tailwind. We'll be good even at 80 miles an hour. Let's go run this sucker down, take advantage of the fast charging curve. Fingers crossed that 350 kilowatt charger is available. I've yet in, I don't know how many thousand miles of driving, 1200 miles of driving so far since yesterday, I've yet to hit a charger that can max out the Lucid Air uh, and get it in a situation where I can get good speeds uh, at low state of charge. So here we are finally maximizing the car. Let's hope the infrastructure doesn't let us down. Uh, sir, I don't think it's supposed to be like that. You gotta close that thing but uh, I'm not slowing down because we're here to maximize. So uh, let's hope we don't have to do a windshield replacement on Out of Spec Dave's Lucid. <laughs> Watch out for the height warning on the bridge. <laughs> uh, these guys were just hanging out the window saying, your box is open, your box is open. So there they go. I guess they're gonna pull over and fix it. Nice work to those people, but they slowed us down. We gotta keep going. We are now at the exit for Grand Junction. We are at 3% state of charge, and now we have to do the four mile trek off the highway to get to the freaking charger. Who thought this was a good idea to put a charger here? I'm not sure. All I know is it still shows us empty on the app, and there's one working 350 kilowatt charger. Both Ryan and Colton are not far behind and we can go 51 miles per hour here. Both Ryan and Colton are not far behind, but this stretch off the highway and back, it's roughly eight to 10 mile detour it, at low speed is really gonna give the Model S some serious advantage. So we need this chart, excuse me, we need this charging stop to be as fast, as seamless, as perfect as possible, because we also have to do a deep charge. So we need the big speeds down low, the battery pack somehow is, still preconditioning even though it says we can't cancel it so I, that's okay i want it to stay preconditioning we got people pulling out in front of us i'm hitting the throttle so the emergency braking doesn't kick on we can't slow down we are all about maximizing efficiency right now uh, and getting the fastest possible charge so uh i don't know what's going to happen but all i know is i'm going to do everything i can to get this thing to charge as fast as possible little update here from the model s 44 percent state of charge we are getting 2.4 mile per kilowatt hour. Not great efficiency here in the Model S. The least efficient car on here. Very bumpy right now. So still showing 10% state of charge on arrival. Um, we have 84 miles to go. Kyle is nearly to the Grand Junction charger. We are still behind him quite a bit. He's got to have a perfect charge because he's going from Grand... Oh, hello. That was a big compression. He's going from Grand Junction all the way back to Windsor. Uh, both Ryan and I are gonna have to stop. So my plan is to go from here to parachute, charge up on the V3 as quick as possible, hit Edwards, and then we're on the way home. So two V3s here to go. I am really closing in on Ryan right behind him. Um, yeah, about seven, eight minutes behind him. So he has to stop in Grand Junction as well. If Kyle's on the 350, he's only on the 150. Hmm, that'll be interesting. And is the 350 in use? We don't know. Ryan just hit Colorado, so I am a little bit behind him here. You can see the Colorado border right here. And there's the Colorado state line. Now we're back in Colorado few hundred more miles. Okay, we got stuck at every freaking stoplight here. We're at 2% pulling into Walmart or Sam's Club. I don't know, doesn't matter. Pulling into the EA charger. And I really hope it was worth it to come here rather than to go to a Signet charger. Every other charger was a Signet and this car charges like crap on a Signet, which is why we're here. And you know things are bad when we're coming to Grand Junction on a trip because this is so far off the highway. So no cars are here. No cars are here, which means we should, Chrysler 300, hit the throttle, which means we should be able to get charger number two out of our way. Thank you very much, squeezing through. And charger number two is 
charger. One, two, great. Zoom in on the brakes. <laughs> Let's get this thing charging. Holy smokes. Go, 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 go. Oh, one thing we need to do, turn off climate, open frunk, no, charge port. Crap, hit the wrong button. <laughs> They're right next to each other. Get the car plugged in, first steps first. Ah, in, plug and charge, work, front trunk, close. Damn, that was just an epic, epic run. Really maximizing the car. Probably could have kicked on AC a little bit sooner, but it's a good thing I shut it off to maintain speed because we are at 2%. We're kicking on. Now, come on, this is our chance to win. This is the make or break for the Lucid. If we don't get a good charging session here, we will not beat the Model S. The Taycan, mm, maybe there's still a chance, but this one, I'm not sure. Here we go. This is the make or break. It doesn't say limited by charging station yet. 90, 100. Oh yeah, baby, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, maybe it's not the big peak, but we'll take 200 kilowatts. Oh, baby. Yes. Okay, it's not as fast as the other cars. This thing should do, you know, 350 kilowatts at this state of charge. Maybe it'll ramp up after a second, I don't know. But hey, 200 kilowatts is great. It's not saying limited by charger, so my guess is it's limited by the car. Wow. Wow, power steering is on, even though we're charging, weird. AC compressor is just kicking on even though climate's off. So it's already trying to cool the battery. Great news. Not a big peak. Again, still, I feel like I've gotten well over 300 kilowatts at 4% state of charge. AC compressor is zooming. Okay, I don't really care, but this is great. We can we can win with 196 kilowatts as long as it holds it. And we are already tapering off of 200 kilowatts. What the heck? This thing is supposed to be the fastest charging EV on the planet. If the charger can give us 190, let us stay at 190. I do not understand this, but it's not worth... Let me just make sure cable cooling is on. Cable cooling is on. 181 kilowatts two minutes we've already put in seven kilowatt hours eight percent all right well now since we're here we're going to be here for a while let's figure out our next stop which i'm pretty sure is going to be the ending location with the ac unit cranking away and it not saying limited by charging station my guess is the battery is overheated but to be totally honest there was no way to precondition to the station because it wanted to go to that one in moab and then when it finally figured out i could make it here it basically said, um, you're a too low state of charge. You have to use manual preconditioning, which I put on. And then it put on that screen that wouldn't let me cancel. So my guess is that was a software bug and it never actually preconditioned. That's the only thing I can think. It doesn't seem to be the charger is the limit. We got more from the charger and chargers don't typically derate like this. Very not good charging here from the Lucid, very poor. So it is 296 miles from here to Windsor, Colorado, back to where we're ending, basically Fort Collins, Colton shop. And we are sitting here just at 174 kilowatts, 175 kilowatts maxed out with the fans and the AC blasting on the car with climate control off. The only thing I can think is the battery must be hot. Uh, very, very odd behavior. Never seen this uh, other than when I've thermal throttled the car. So we really can't take advantage of this charging session like maybe the Taycan can, because when Ryan gets here, we might just give him the 350 and I'll switch to the 150 um, if he gets here when we're still charging. Um, actually, what's weird is look at this, we're, com we're climbing back up. Maybe the battery is cooled off and it's coming back up, 193, 184. Come on, baby, let's go. Rip that cooling, let's let's go. So my, my guess is this is 100% battery temperature related. Uh, it's 106 degrees outside, it's very hot out here. Well, according to my watch, it's 100. The car says 106. Um, 188 kilowatts, so that's good. So 190, oh, <laughs> we are not unplugging from this station. 200, oh crap, this thing is zooming, look at this. 201, 202, 34, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? 210? 215 there we go 217 we'll take it that's awesome great news 
Okay, well, definitely thermal related then because I've never seen this car charged like this other than temperature related. Really wish it would let me, you know, maintain the option of manual preconditioning even if it doesn't think I can make it to a charger or just let me get to a charger at 1%. So many wishes in this car. The software still needs to be dialed in. Today was a huge improvement, but we're still so far away from what I would consider a production shippable software version because that you should not overheat your lucid air battery pack when it's 100 degrees outside it's not even that hot like this car's built in arizona uh you know it's 100 degrees every day all summer the car's got to be built to handle that anyway um so is this going to be our last stop it's 300 miles pretty much on the nose 293 something like that to get back to colton's we actually will gain a total of a thousand feet of elevation up and over the rockies as we come down so we need to account for the total gain of elevation um, the thing is, there are just no other good chargers on the route. Obviously through the Rocky Mountains you have here, there's Rifle, which is right up the road, but it's a 200 kilowatt charge point. So we could possibly do a deeper charge there, but it's an Express Plus, which shares, and we're already plugged into an ABB, and I don't want to come off the highway. So I think we stay here in Grand Junction. Then after Rifle, which is sort of that backup unit, there is a uh, there is Glenwood Springs, which is a Signet, so we can't do that. Then there's Edwards, which is a Signet, so we can't do that. But then there's Frisco. I've been forgetting about Frisco. Frisco's an ABB. Every station's derated, as far as I'm aware. I'm gonna double check plug share. If someone has had a good check-in in Frisco, it might be faster for us to blast there, plug in, because it's an ABB station, and then go. But after Frisco, there's nothing. Uh, you know, you have uh, Lakewood, which is Signet, and then there's really no EAs until we get to Loveland, which is basically the end. Um, and, and there's some EV goes, but they're pretty far off the highway and it doesn't really make sense to divert to go to them unless we got terrible charging. That Frisco idea though, might be faster than sitting here trying to top charge. Hmm. Okay, well through the mountains, the speeds are gonna be lower. However, we are gonna gain some serious elevation, but temperatures will also be lessened as we get through the night, which means less AC draw and I can drive without air conditioning. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna get somewhere around 2.9, 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour, somewhere around there. And that means if I charge to 60%, we will just squeak into Frisco. But I do wanna make sure I have just enough charge to account for that big hill climb right at the end to go into the Eisenhower. Oh wait, is it before the Eisenhower tunnel? I think it is after the Eisenhower tunnel. And I don't like going consistent load on cars at low states of charge to climb up. So um, I think we're gonna go to like 63%, something like that, and then we'll head out. We've already been here 20 minutes. We're at 50% state of charge. So in terms of like C rate, stress on the battery pack, this is half as much stress on the battery pack than the Tycon, and it's already overheating. Meanwhile, Tycon can rip zero to 50% in 10 minutes. So this is, I think, the main area Lucid needs to improve on is charging in collaboration with Tesla, get that V3000 volt support and get it to charge much faster than this right here. Cause this 125 kilowatts at 51% just isn't gonna cut it. Sorry. Right. So let's charge to 63. Now Ryan should be here any second is my understanding. And I'm gonna be nice. And as soon as I see him pulling in, I told him to call me, I'm gonna unplug the Lucid and pull it over here to the 150 kilowatt and let him, oh wait, Ryan, you're here. Use this one. This is, this is full speed. I said, call me when you come in. Yeah, I said to call me when you come in. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna move the Lucid for you so you can get fast charging. I just need another 10%. Holy shit, I did not see Ryan pulling at all. Yeah. Let's give the tight gun. I mean, we're here to be good, good sports. So let's uh, get this Lucid out of the way. It's not crashing Orion. Let's move over. Skirt and cables. Put it in park. Let's get it plugged back in. Okay, so now it's a race. <laughs> it's a real race here, holy smokes. I guess Ryan doesn't text it, check his text while he's driving. That's good. Let's see if we get plug and charge. Now, we just left some time on the table to help our teammate over here. And it doesn't seem to be. Oh, did we just screw ourselves? It says unplug charging error. Oh, crap. Ryan. <laughs> okay, unplug. In you go. Thank you. Who's this? Thank you. Who? What the heck? 
That's not right. Uh, yours is? No, yours is. Oh yeah, no, mine, mine thinks someone named Ganapathy is here. Okay, Grand Junction. Open up this bad boy. This one should be working. Ready. Hey, is it? Is it working? Oh, okay. What was that? And there is, hey Kyle, he is a saint this time around because he actually moved for me, didn't snake me. Moved so I could take the 350, which was working. Ah, one-handed, here we go. No idea if you can see any of this, but I nailed it. Oh, look at that, go Ryan. Okay, it's connecting. Kyle is having a connection error. Yours is? No, yours is. Oh, yeah, I was just... mine, mine thinks someone named here. Let's finish their session and try again. Okay, please unplug. It is. Oh my god. All right, I think I'm going to go over there. All right, good luck. I'm going to hop in. <laughs> Brutal. What the heck? Everyone's going to be in the comments. Well, Kyle just want to see the Tycon win. I just want to see what the cars will do at their maximum. Full send. Here we go. <laughs> Looks like the Tycon is charging. Green. I'll pull up the trip stats. Here you go, 137. And then... Since last charge. Uh, 201 miles, 3 miles per kilowatt hour. Over 240 kilowatts. Alright. I need to pee. Let's see. Lucid. Well, let's go. This one is working. I checked it on the app. So we are costing minutes here. That was probably, this is probably gonna be a three or four minute delay. <laughs> you guys are along for the ride. Here we go, preparing to charge, good. <laughs> also, Ryan can get good speeds. Let's see how it's going. 250 kilowatts, sir. Yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> Ripping. You got the car off? Yes. Sick, all right. Running to do the restroom? Yep. Good to see you. I'll see you later. Yes, sir. I don't know. I think, I, honestly, you might have it. I, don't know. I have to do another stop. I can't make it home. Well, I could, but it's actually faster if I stop in Frisco. Oh. So I'm going to Frisco. Yeah, so you better optimize. Okay, initiating charging. Are we charging yet? The answer is yes. There we go. Good. Okay. So that cost us roughly three minutes. Also, Ryan can have the advantage of the fast charging. <laughs> Let's see how the Tycon's charging. See how a real car charges with good thermal management on initial plug-in. Here we go. Boom. 254 kilowatts sitting flat out. That's what I'm talking about. You know what? The fans haven't even kicked on this thing yet. Tycon does not care. <laughs> what a beast that this car is. It, honestly, the next-gen Tycon, if they just put a slightly bigger battery in it, would smoke everything. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. This Lucid just needs a better charging curve. I will say though, I'm glad I took the Lucid on this drive because it's so much bigger, roomier, and more comfortable than the Tycon on a long stretch. This screen is just completely fried here. It says, thank you for choosing Electrify America. Honestly, you gave us no choice. 116 kilowatts. So we're charging to 65%, let's just say. That'll give us a roughly 2% buffer based on my calculations, and that's what we want. This is just Tycon doing Tycon things. 265 kilowatts at 36%. What's the Lucid at 36%? Like 160, a whole 100 kilowatts slower? Uh, <laughs> crazy. Four minutes, 20 kilowatt hours. Oh my God. It's going to be a lot of work to keep up with Ryan in the Lucid. My next stop is Frisco. I need, like I said, 65, 67%. I think 65% and I'll stretch it slower if I need to. I'm not gonna sit here at 93 kilowatts. So we're almost- I just talked to Ryan. We're both like, this is a full on race at this point between the Model S, Colton's in front of us now, going to parachute to a V3 for a couple minute charge. We sitting here at 79 kilowatts, we need one more percent. I'm trying to cool down the battery on max, but it takes forever for the AC to spin back up when we're connected to a charger. So it, right now the AC compressor is just off. I don't hear it spinning at all and then like it has to reconfigure and then it'll run interior climate. Just crazy. Okay, screw this max AC stuff. We're at 65% state of charge. Good luck, Ryan. It's a full on race. We both have one more charge. Before I leave, I just wanna show, I mean, you'll show your viewers this. 50% just came off the ledge. You were doing 270 kilowatts yep. 
and I'm still doing 220. 227 at 50. My car does 120 at 50. That blows. It really blows. And it's a much bigger battery. So like, what's going on? Anyway, seven minutes, 31 kilowatt hours. That's insane. We are got to We got to go. We got to go. We got to get the heck out of here. 66%. That's not good luck, is it? Let's go. Unplug. We put in six minutes, 11 kilowatt hours on this session, but we need it to make it to Frisco, according to my calculations. So, in the reverse, Terry. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So, Kyle is finishing up there. He has one more stop as well. I need to charge up probably about 70-ish percent. So another few minutes, but not very long at all. So, there goes Kyle. He's got one more stop. And he's ripping it properly. <laughs> Those tires scream. Well, can't complain about these speeds too much. See ya. Take the second exit at the traffic circle. Off we go then, full send. All right, we are out. Ryan is still charging, so we pulled out before him, but it won't be long until he leaves. He's only gonna be a few minutes behind us. Granted, we are gonna go farther on the next leg than him. Uh, Colton's giving me a call, but 65%, 179 miles. Let's freaking do it. Yeah, so I'm gonna need about 70, 71% to get there. Still ripping almost 190 kilowatts. Should be 11 minutes maybe, 12 minutes. We'll see exactly. All right, 9% is enough for me. I'm happy with that. A 13 minute charge, 151 kilowatts, it's still doing. Um, all right, let's unplug. I-70 East, wow, that took forever to get over here. Come on, Lucid, let's freaking go. Full send. Up to 75, we can go. I really don't know if I calculated this efficiency correctly. I hope I did. I really hope I did because, uh, yeah, we, we need, we need it. Colton's ahead of us. He only has like a few minute charge. Ryan's already unplugged and heading out. So it's so close. I don't know who's going to win this. That's crazy. It's so close. I think Colton probably should have charged less in Green River. Um, but, but me and Ryan, I think we're optimizing best the charging stations will allow. Uh, as I'm just pulling out of Grand Junction, I realized how much of a freaking idiot I am. Why was I thinking Frisco was an ABB station? I was thinking it because it, it's an old Gen 1 Signet. And I was thinking, oh, well, it doesn't have the light around the outside. Why? I know it's a Signet. Oh, no. So now what are we going to do? I can't go to Frisco and get Signet Surge. It would take too long. So I think what I'm going to do is either we'll take, as we get closer, we'll play around with the numbers, but there's a few options. There's a 200 kilowatt charge point station, a charge point express plus in Georgetown, Colorado. Now that, because this car is such high voltage, will give it 200 kilowatts. So that's good. Um, and it's consistent and the express pluses are, are, there was just one, I was gonna say they're really reliable. Although last time I was there last weekend, only one of the four were working, but I don't expect anyone to be there at you know 9.30 at night, because I think it's past Frisco. But that also means we need to climb up to the Eisenhower tunnel on this charge, which I did not account for. So we're just gonna have to play it by ear. I really screwed up that one big time. Why was I thinking Frisco was ABB? I don't know. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Well, now comes damage control mode. Okay, you join me in the Lucid with a bit of an update and a bit of a plan. We are going to hammer down and see if we can crest the Eisenhower Tunnel on our remaining charge, 60% leaving Grand Junction. We have a huge elevation gain, but I'm hoping we can do it. Um, if we can do it, then... We're gonna stop probably in Georgetown at the charge point station. Now it seems like they're pretty buggy and only two of four are working, but it should give us 200 kilowatts. If we can't make it there, then we will still stop in Frisco and just eat the surge a little bit just to get in and out and down the road. 
we might actually, and if it really looks like we can't make it, I might actually stop in Edwards, which is earlier than Frisco, because their Signet charger is much closer to the highway. It's literally off, plug in, we'll surge a little bit, just get a couple kilowatt hours, and then we can hit the road. So we have some options. It's gonna be a gut feeling thing, because the Lucid's of no help to figure this out. It wants me to stop in Vail at 174 kilowatt station that doesn't exist. Uh, it's a 125. And it might even be a 62 and a half. It's one of the CP 250s. So Lucid's charging, this is a wrong number. That doesn't exist. I don't know what to do other than wait and see and make a gut feeling decision. Oh man, I don't want to let this car down. We got, I got to get this car there. I'm getting wild amounts of phantom braking right now. It just keeps dropping. I had one, it just put on full anchors. Holy smokes. Four miles away from parachute here and arrive with 9%. We need to be on our game with this. So let's turn climate off here. Off. Seats. Off. We've got our wet rag ready to go. I think we're going to shoot for 41% and then run to Edwards. The boys are closing in on us. Wow. Kyle still has one stop. Ryan still has one stop. I'm definitely thinking I'm going to beat Ryan out of parachute here and he's going to stop in Edwards which is where we're stopping but he'll charge a lot faster in Edwards so oh boy this is going to be a good one rolling in hot here to parachute you guys are coming out the wrong way let's go let's go v6 Mustang life baby All right, we are rolling in hot tamale here. In rat. So plugged in at 658. Let's keep that in mind. 206, 218. Let's get it. Get up there. Okay, well, here's an idea. It shows a 19% arrival in Edwards. And if you guys remember, at 26% state of charge, 25, 26, we come out of the Signet surge. So maybe we just eat the surge in Edwards for a few percent, and it's better than getting to Frisco lower and charging deeper into the surge or risking not making it to the top of the tunnel. So that's my current thought is to actually pull in early in a state of charge range where we don't get Signet surge just because the car operates in a voltage range that doesn't seem to freak out the chargers up until about 40 or 50%. Um, and that's probably all we need to get home. The interesting thing is Colton might still win. We'll have to see if he unplugs before us like if he gets out of parachute before we pass parachute, it's almost a guarantee that he'll win. But we also don't need to get as much energy here as he will in Edwards. Because all three of us, the next stop is Edwards right now. And it could be really interesting. And basically, whoever pulls out of Edwards first, assuming they don't get lost or have any issues, are the, the ones who's going to win. Um, but time will tell. We really don't know how this is all gonna play out yet. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna stop there. It's just the thought. Still sitting right at 250, 30% state of charge. Again, I think we're gonna leave here at 42%. And Kyle is right behind us. He may just leapfrog us here. This is saying six more percent. God, I don't know. What do you guys think? What would you do in this situation? We're trying to win this thing. We still need a little bit of a buffer because we're climbing and we're going fast. Oh boy, this is gonna be a big one. I'm on a fairly secluded area of I-70 and I wanted to show you the lane departure warning. The sound is here. Did you hear that? It's almost like an angry little frog hiding in the dashboard. <laughs> one more time, one more time. Okay, here it is. Just like an angry little frog. I love it. That's gotta be actually one of my favorite parts of uh, <laughs> the 
the sounds that this car makes. Even better than the sound of the motors. Uh, hour and a half till we get to Edwards, which will be our final stop. All right, 40% here. We've got towel wrapped on here. This thing is ripping right now. 41%. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Let's go to 42. We're still getting good charge right now. Towel's off. Let's go. In. Door closed. Let's go. Off we go back onto the main road. Guys, you will literally not believe this. Right up there in those little collections of buildings, right over there, that's Parachute. That's where Colton was charging. He just unplugged and he's merging on the highway right over there. So he's within line of sight. The Model S is ahead. He got in and out quicker. But again, we're still gonna have more energy when we get to Edwards. So the way that we win this thing is by eliminating Signet Surge, and it still might actually be faster than sitting in Grand Junction and charging all the way to make it back. So this still may work out okay, um, as long as the Signet Charger doesn't surge so bad. But it's so close, and Ryan's not far behind, only a few minutes behind. So it's really anyone's race, I mean, if the charging infrastructure worked perfectly, the Lucid would win without question. But the charging infrastructure doesn't work perfectly and really doesn't work with this car. And so we either have to do deep charges on ABBs or we get surge. And unfortunately, or fortunately, maybe this worked out lucky for the Lucid, we're gonna go to Edwards as high a state of charge as possible so we can come out of the surge at 25%, get just enough juice and blast home. So that's my plan at least. And um, Edwards it is, baby. I don't know who's gonna win, but it's gonna be really close. Nine minutes, baby. Well, yeah, you're basically within the line of sight. Can you see me? I can just, when I crest the hill, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to see you. <laughs> Holy smokes. It's so close. That was a great charging stop. Yep, uh, nine minutes in and out, and I don't even know what I put in, but I went from 9% to 42% in nine minutes. Amazing. Well, I'm going to Edwards next as well. Are you? So now it's whoever can get out of Edwards first. You're going to get out of Edwards first for sure. No, because I have Signet Surge. Is that a Signet charger? It is. So the reason I'm going there is because I'll get there at a higher state of charge than Frisco, and this car stops Signet surging at 25% to 40%. So I'll be getting there at like 19, so I'll have to surge for like 6%, and then I'll get full speed. Holy smokes. But again, my full speed's only going to be like 160 kilowatts at that state of charge. We are preconditioning right now, but we're still about 44 minutes away from the charging station. So I'm going to let that happen because we will get good speeds once we come out of Signet Surge at 25% state of charge. So I really hope we're not going to leave too much time on the table with this one. It's so unbelievably close. Ryan's maybe 12 miles behind me. Colton's maybe a few miles ahead of me. I mean, we're really all neck and neck and it comes down to the charging strategy going forwards. Um, just talking to Colton briefly on the drive over, um, he mentioned that he might do two charging stops. He might do a charge until it tapers in Edwards and then rip at Thornton, which is right on I-25 heading home, but it's right off the highway. And that might be the strategy. Whereas um, Ryan's gonna use the great charging curve of the Tycon and make Edwards his last stop. And I am dumb. Actually, I still think this is faster than sitting at 80 kilowatts. I'm fairly certain our average charging speed is gonna be higher. So let's just say this was planned all along. And in hindsight, it actually worked to our benefit. But um, we are going to charge, make this our last stop and just charge up enough to get there. Now, the best thing for the Lucid, of course, is to find the last available station. Oh, that's me honking as I'm trying to adjust our speed down to 66 miles an hour. Um, now, the best option for the Lucid is to try to uh, reduce our, or find the farthest away charging station we can make it to that's not a Signet. The problem is, 
there's really not many and the charge point express plus that went in in georgetown is looking really buggy and not great results so i don't know what to expect here other than i think we kind of need to stop in edwards it might be uh the lesser of all the evils is what i'm thinking right now i checked out all the details if we were to stop to a charging station in denver and in denver uh we would need to average 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour to make it there and i just don't see that happening through the rockies from the elevation gain we have to do. So anyway, I got the screen brightness and brightness turned all the way down. We're trying to maximize all the efficiency here. Let's, uh, let's make this thing happen. I can't wait. There's actually a fire station in there. I just watched a whole documentary on it an hour ago. Listen to it, I should say. It's a great YouTube uh, link. If you look up uh, Colorado DOT, Glenwood Springs Fire, something like that, you'll see the video just went up. It was really epic. Uh, they keep all their fire trucks inside the middle of the tunnel. It's so cool. Oh boy, this is truly a race at this point. This is going to come right down to the end. So let's talk about my plan for finishing off race to Vegas to Windsor. So here we are in the plaid, 12% state of charge remains on the way to Edwards. It looks like we're gonna arrive right at 4% state of charge. Now, what I had originally planned on doing was just doing a little bit deeper charge in Edwards. And then I got thinking, what about another V3 to where I can utilize the curve? See this car around, I believe it's 35 to between 35 and 40% definitely tapers. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go from Edwards, do a quick top up, I'm talking nine minutes in and out, and then we are going straight to Thornton to do the same thing and that'll be our last charge. So I believe we have roughly around 18 to 20 minutes left of charging in the Model M. We are less than 20 minutes away from our last charging stop and genuinely I have no idea who's gonna win. It could be any of us three. And for you guys watching this video, I'm sure there's probably some anticipation. Imagine us, you'll find out in just a few minutes because the video is sped up. We have to live through this. I don't know who's gonna win, truly. It is crazy how close this is coming down to be because here's the situation. Colton's gonna stop in Edwards, but he's just gonna charge up for a quick splash and dash and then go to Thornton, which yes, he'll have some time leaving the highway and getting back on, but he'll be able to maximize the charging curve of the car. Now, I hope he gets stuck at the red light in Thornton and has a couple minute delay, but we're literally down to minutes of optimization here. I am going to Edwards and I have actually planned it perfectly. In hindsight, this could not be more well optimized for the Lucid. I've been checking every charging station up and down I-70 and even into Denver, and they're all signets or broken or sketchy, and including the ChargePoint Express Plus, super offline, bad check-ins, and um, like not worth risking it for one plug, which there's someone there right now, so we wouldn't be able to charge. Um, we are gonna be pulling into Edwards at 20, 4% the car is predicting. Signet surge ends at 25%. So we're literally maximizing the amount of time out of Signet surge at this station. Yeah, we're not getting the maximum of the car, but it's better than sitting at 80 kilowatts back there, which was the original plan, just to blast to Windsor. So this is faster for sure, assuming there's an open charger in Edwards, which I believe there will be. And then Ryan in the Tycon is going to get to Edwards probably low, but he's going to get much higher charging power than I will. And my stop's probably going to have to be 20 minutes. He'll be 10 minutes behind me, but Tycon only needs probably a 10 minute charge, which means we might pull out at the exact same time, or at least very close to each other. And then it's just a matter of optimizing traffic, who gets stuck behind a truck. I mean, genuinely, it is so close. And what's crazy is each car has their own like pros and cons. Like I'm having to work really hard in this Lucid with math to optimize this thing. Whereas Ryan can rely on the Porsche trip planner pretty heavily, but then also needs great charging infrastructure. And then the Tesla Colton's just plugging it in. Definitely Colton's having the easiest time here. Ryan's having a bit easier time than I am. 
but like I'm not really sure how a normal person would optimize the loose in the way I'm really trying to. I mean, I'm doing calculations every five minutes. Um, this is epic, truly epic. I've never, could never have imagined that this would have been the result, especially after yesterday's run where there was such a huge disparity between the cars. I, I can't believe it, truly, this is wild. Rolling into Edwards here, very hot using the Mountain Pass Performance brakes. So we gotta go around this roundabout right here. Let's go, let's go. Ooh, nice Aston. All right, gents, let's go here. Come on, Subi, go! We need speed. Kyle is six minutes behind us, he said. Mega, here we go. Let's say one way. Why is everything wrong way here? It's been a while since I've been to this station. All right, we've got the wet rag ready. There is a Model Y, Model 3 here. Boom. Let's take this in spot here. Boom, and let's go. So we're leaving at 40%. We're charging. I'm not gonna wait for it. I really have to go to the bathroom and I will be right back. Colton has just plugged in in Edwards. I'm only five minutes behind him. Ryan just texted, he's eight minutes behind me roughly. Uh, this is going to be epic. So the question is, um, who's got the better charging curve? That's what it comes down to. Tesla's gonna pull 250, Tycon's gonna pull 270, I'm gonna pull one something, but I'm more efficient. I don't, I don't know who's gonna win. Okay, we are pulling into Edwards and our best case scenario may have just happened. Colton plugged into a supercharger that was only giving him 127 kilowatts. I was monitoring from the app and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember there's a bank of superchargers here. It's been a problem for a while that don't output full power. It's so weird. So I told him move to the other side of the station. I couldn't remember which one was good and which one was bad. All I know is we are hauling ass in the way and Colton's just over here to the left. I can see the EA station in view. Um, and I believe all are available. First time ever, uh, full send. Uh, which way do we go? Left, I think. Yeah. And then we pull in here. So Colton should be switching the Model S and I'm gonna rip in and plug in to one of these over here. Should we go down the wrong way? No, because there's a car coming towards us. Everyone out of our way, we're coming through. Oh man, well, let me tell you what just happened here. So it's plugged in over there on the other cabinet only getting 125 kilowatts. I went to the bathroom and I'm like, oh my God, it's not working. And we are now at 154. So we're already getting more. Dang it, I wish I would have picked that up. Look who it is, Mr. Connor. Getting good speeds now. So we're still only pulling 160 kilowatts at 40%, darn it. And here we are pulling in. There is Colton, hopefully getting a little bit better speeds this time. He's got the wet rag on, probably doesn't need it at this point. But here we need to find a 350. I'm pretty sure this one is. And it's all about the charging curve. And brakes, park, let's go. Charge port, uh, open, climb it, off. Yes. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we gotta get this thing charging. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it comes. My phone somehow stopped recording in the middle of all of this. You're getting very limited charging. Yep, so we're going up though, 193. And I've been surging this whole time. We're three minutes into the charging session. I'm still surging, 40 kilowatts. We gotta come out of it at maybe 27%. I can't remember the exact percentage, but it's just around here. So we're at basically same state of charge right same now. Same state of charge right now. <laughs> oh my God, but you're charging way faster. Yes. than I am yeah, and you get right and now. you get to pop you're at 195 yep. wow it keeps going up okay so gotta make a stop in Thornton though I haven't calculated that even close to it all so I think that's going to be like that's a quick splash and dash 25 percent and leave less probably yeah. you may not you'll probably unplug when you're still doing 250 yeah but it's just make it to the yeah. shop <laughs> dead or not right 
Um, and here we are, look at this, 209 kilowatts. We're out of the surge, 27%. Charge so that was four minute buffer and I'm charging faster than the Model S right now because you're at a sort of a broken supercharger. You've tried two stalls here. We don't know yep. what's going on. Farthest stall and farthest stall. So two different cabinets. Right, there's only two cabinets to choose from. So very odd. I've had issues at this charger before actually. I mean, we're still getting juice. You can't complain with 200 kilowatts. But when you're like, I plugged in and I ran inside, I had to poop so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go in. And I was like, I'm leaving it here. Yeah. So you did like, the old oh. plug in and walk away. Yeah. And the one time it didn't work. I had to. And I'm over here. We're getting 190 kilowatts. That's what I'm talking about. So Colton, I guess I'll see you at the shop. We have no idea who's going to win. We're minutes apart from each other. It could be anyone. What do you have to get to stay to charge anything? I don't know. That's what I need to calculate. Okay, I'll leave you alone. All right, I'll see you later. Ryan should be pulling in any second. He was just a few minutes behind me. We've been here for five or six minutes because it took a minute to get plugged in. I don't know why my phone didn't record, but I was full send getting this thing plugged in. Um, we surged for a while. Now we're getting great speeds following the charging curve properly. 187 kilowatts. I need to see how much juice we need to make it home. So let me calculate. Finally ramped back up. We're now pulling 238. I think we either had a super hot pack in this. I mean, we plugged in, ripped it, and left and blasted here. So may have been a hot pack. I've got this thing charging with the rag on it. It's nice and cool on there. So we're looking for 40%, five more percent, and we are gone. 39, we're going. Ryan's falling in. Hey, Ryan, just leaving. Oh my God, this is chaos. Okay, well, I have done some calculations. I think I only need 40 kilowatt hours. That's averaging four miles per kilowatt hour, which is a tall task because I still have to climb Vail Pass and through the Eisenhower Tunnel. Uh, so that would leave me with about uh, 38, 37% state of charge I can unplug. I don't know what I'm at right now, but I'm not far away juicing up. I'm at 34, but I don't think I'd actually make it. So I think I need a little bit of buffer for the two big hill climbs. Um, but once we crest the second one, we're good. It's 161 miles. So if we charge to 40%, that would be, oh my gosh. <laughs> Ryan coming in hot, full brakes. I'll help him out. We'll get the charger in for him. Let's go. Oh no, and Colton's leaving. Okay, we gotta go as fast as possible. And we're just leaving. <laughs> oh my God, this is just pure chaos here. Uh, I'm trying to get it Kyle. in. What? There we go. Beautiful, thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes, I was just explaining my charging strategy. Dude, That's this it. is crazy. This we're, is crazy. We are at Colton's house. He just pulled what? out and he's yeah. right over here merging right onto the highway. So, here we go. <laughs> Oh my God. Wow. So processing payment, plug and charge. I'm doing 174 kilowatts. Oh, nice. But I need like another, I think I might beat you. I think, yeah. I think I might beat you by like a few minutes because I only need 5% more state of charge. Oh yeah. Maybe six, something like that. All right, well, let's see. So Ryan's got to get a good charge. If he has any issues, he's kind of hosed. Oh, that was a suggestion of a stop sign, wasn't it? Okay. What a mess. Dang it, that sucks. All right, back on the road. <sighs> okay, 118 miles till Thornton. I'll update you guys when we get rolling here a bit more. All right, well, let's see. Right. Uh, let's check the charging speeds. The car's not charging yet. Yeah, it takes a moment. So Colton has pulled out, but he has one more charging stop uh, because he was getting a poor session. It was about to taper. Does it really take this long to start charging? Uh, yes. Wow. And uh, those are stats. Uh, oh no. <laughs> CarPlay, it's so annoying. All right, so the Taycan just got juicing, ramping up 179 kilowatts right here. It should be doing more than that, 180. Don't you think you should be getting faster speeds? The only thing I can think of is if this is mislabeled. Oh, what if this is actually a 150 and that's the 350? Yeah, I need to go back. Okay, I will check the app and then I got to get the heck out of here because you're pegged at 180, which would mean very similar to like a 150 kilowatt charger. Yeah. All right, let's check their app. 
Well, guys, I did everything I could there. Gosh dang it, it's even fogging up in here because I am just sweating my butt off. I've been running everywhere. So 38% right now, it is saying we're gonna get into Thornton with 8%. How in the heck is that possible? 30% to go 116 miles. We've got two major mountain passes, Vail and then over the Eisenhower Tunnel. But after the Eisenhower, it is straight downhill into Thornton. So, wow, we buckle up, folks. <laughs> Man, it really depends how soon Kyle can get out of there. I have got to make this next stop as precise as possible. I am not giving a single buffer. If we run out, we freaking run out. We're going to plug in and try and get it down to absolutely zero. Keep in mind, we have three kilowatt hours after zero. So about, I don't know, 10 to 12 miles. We will do what we can here. I really want the Model S to win. Yeah, so this is the 350 kilowatt charger limiting you to 182 kilowatts. Why is, Ew. we have no idea. Okay. Um, that's all, I got 200 out of mine. So when I unplug, you may want to switch, Ryan. And then it's just how quickly can you knife through traffic? 41% and I'm surging again. So I really need to get out of here. Let's just do some calculations, make sure we can make it back. It's whoever pulls out of here first. And I think I'm gonna beat Ryan out of here. If that charger isn't gonna deliver full power, I think we're gonna beat him, so. Okay, sorry about that. Ran out of iPhone storage. We're only getting 183 kilowatts right now, which to me seems like it could be that this is mislabeled uh, both on the charger itself uh, and in the app as a 350 when it's actually just a 150. Let me pull up the charging. There you go, you can see that. And then again, here are the stats for the previous drive. 137 miles, 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So, uh, I'm gonna hang on and uh, hopefully when Kyle's done, I can move over and get some extra charging speed, but we'll see. Let's put in the destinations, run some numbers, look at the efficiency of everything, because we still have two hill climbs, so it's not gonna be as good as I really want it to be efficiency-wise. I'm gonna base everything off of 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, as we have to go all the way up to 10,000 feet, and then we do lose elevation, but it's not that big of a difference from where we are right now, just a couple thousand feet. So no idea what'll happen, but let's see. Okay, so all my calculations are pointing towards roughly 50% state of charge if we calculate it somewhere in the low to mid threes. And so I think I'm probably not going to wait that long, but I think I'm going to get, I'm going to try and unplug before Ryan does, but I think I need more than 44 to crest the hills. It's so hard to know with the elevation. I also need to check wind because we're going to be cutting it close. So let me check the wind maps. Okay, the wind is looking still. I got 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour from Grand Junction. Let's see what Ryan got. I know he put it in the video already, but I'm curious. Ryan, what was your efficiency from Grand Junction? Uh, 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. You're a surgeon. Yep, I am a surgeon. Take a video. Goddamn signet stations. Take a video. It was, what was it? Uh, 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Oh, I was 3.1. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is where you could have beat me, but signet happened. Oh, yeah. So look at that, 180, 80. He's all over the place. Surging hard. Definitely. And I'm surging hard over here as well. But he's getting higher, higher power than I am. How much more do you need? I think another, I'm, I'm, I think I could stretch it now. Yeah. So. If you had a perfect session, you would have been, uh, you'd probably be at 50, 40% by now. Yeah, unfortunately not, not uh, in the cards right now. So you can blame Signet for the Tycon losing because yeah. I think we know, unless you can drive through traffic. 47%, I was here 13 minutes. We put in 27 kilowatt hours. We started surging bad and I'm fairly certain I could make it back at 47. But if I miscalculated, then Ryan, you're going to pass me probably. That's right. If I have to slow down. So I'm hoping- I'm gonna move over stalls because I'm getting those surges pretty good. But I don't think surging, uh, it won't make a difference if you move. You don't think so? Zero. All right. All right, I'm, uh... Ryan, you can just plug it in. Oh yeah, right on that. All right, we are heading out now and uh, Ryan is taking, oh, you have to wait till it says charging finished, Ryan. Hit finish on the screen. You can touch it, just hit finish. 
All right, I'm helping him out. Why am I sitting here? We gotta go. He should know how to plug in a damn car by now. Here we go, off we go. Why is there a rental Model 3 nosing into an EA when the supercharger is right there? The mysteries of life of people using electric cars for the first time. Okay, off we go then. Kyle just left and I didn't even move. I just used this charger. We'll see if it surges. I don't know if it will or not. I know Kyle yesterday in Salina had Signet surge on that 350. Well, I did not. So that makes me hopeful, cautiously optimistic even. And again, this handshake is always gonna take forever. I-70 East, see you later, Ryan. We're throttle down, 47%, baby. Now it's just, can we get past Thornton before Colton has to plug and unplug? I feel like I was there way too long because of the surging. Um, I don't think there's any hope for Ryan at this point, but uh, especially with him unplugging, he should have asked me first. I would have said, don't unplug when it surges. It doesn't make a difference. But we are stuck in traffic. That could be the make or break. You can see here, I'm clogged up between these trucks. Ryan might be able to inch his way forward if he can get up. It's 160 miles, a lot can happen. Four kilowatts, all right. Well, that didn't work. I just plugged back into the one where I was surging on. That's gonna be the best we're gonna get and I'm gonna help someone plug in for the first time. Love the green and the blue. It's a nice color combo. Just helped uh, that woman uh, figure out how to plug in her vehicle. Fortunately, a lot easier with a Tesla and uh, a lot fewer problems. Now, I get to go to the bathroom. Last time, let's do it. We are pulling into Vail, Colorado now, and we have 150 miles on the nose left to go. I'm charged to 43% state of charge, which I think is actually probably a little bit more than I needed based off of my most recent calculations. I should have left maybe two or three minutes earlier. Um, and, uh, and right now all these minutes count. So I hope I didn't let the car down there. Um, Colton is only about nine minutes ahead of me. We've calculated something like that. So it just comes down to, can he get into the supercharger and out? before I get past. I'm certainly gonna be maximizing this thing through traffic everywhere possible. Um, just zipping through, taking no names. Uh, we have plenty of range to make it back. Even the car thinks we'd make it back with 50 miles in the tank. So I definitely overcharged, which is a little bit of a bummer. I was also trying to get Ryan's car plugged in and I don't know, shouldn't have done that, but I still think I can win. I just need to knife through traffic a little bit better than Colton. And he still has one more charging stop and I don't. Unplugging for the last time. It was a nine minute charge after everything went through, you know, had to do multiple charges. Get some music cranking and rip the last two and a half hours. Let's go. Yes, unfortunately that charging session was far from ideal. Uh, both with the surging and then swapping twice was uh, uh, just not the right decision on my part, unfortunately, but I thought it was worth the gamble. Um, and um, I think one thing I'd like to mention is, while I did have that Signet Surge that you saw, it doesn't seem like it's as bad as it is in the Lucid. For example, it, the average charging speed while it's surging seems to be higher. Additionally, it only happens for a, a much shorter period of time. It seems like the Lucid surges for minutes at a time, and this will only do it for a couple of minutes, three minutes or so. We are boogieing up the hill right now, five over, just uh, always a big differential speed with trucks through here can be quite sketchy, gotta watch out for it. Um, I'm going slow because these folks in front of me are going. The guy in front of us, hardcore on the Jake brake. Hit it, yeah. Yeah, we love the Jake brake. Awesome. <laughs> He's having fun with it too. Yeah, buddy. Hit the Jake brake. Yes. Yes. Thing sounds so damn good. Yes, sir. It's <laughs> freaking awesome. Uh, it just said that the highway is closed at the tunnel. Uh, do we do Loveland Pass? Let me call Colton, he knows what's going on up ahead. Let, I say we all take the same route, so whatever he's decided is what we're gonna do. All right, well, I've got Kyle here on the phone and uh, I think disaster just struck here for the Model S. So we are climbing Eisenhower right now or the backside of it. 
and we are at a standstill. So that means, yeah, basically not happening here. So Kyle, are you going over Loveland Pass? I'm going over Loveland Pass. I-70 is right there. I just got a notification that I-70 is closed up ahead. Colton did not get the notification in time. Therefore, we are taking Loveland Pass. It just doesn't make sense to sit in traffic. I thought, okay, maybe to keep it fair, we should go sit in traffic with him. But then I was like, you know what? The only rule we have is five over the speed limit. And because the Lucid was slightly behind, we got the benefit of knowing the road was closed up ahead. So Ryan and I are gonna take this. Wait a second, Apple Maps just totally recalculated on me and now said save 10 minutes if we take the Johnson Tunnel. So do I turn around? This is crazy, I don't know what to do. It says, yeah, it says make a U-turn and go back. Uh, shit. Okay, well, I think if, if that that's the way the other guys are going and Ryan said Google Maps said don't take Loveland Pass because the highway was reopening, maybe, we, maybe I should turn around. Got some events developing. So there is this traffic jam that we're uh, looking at and I, I don't know how bad it is. Google Maps says it's better to just stay on I-70. Kyle suggested taking Loveland Pass. It's, um, the time difference is just a few minutes. I'm gonna stay on this road uh, and hope for the best. That's my plan, I think. And uh, we'll, we'll make it there when we make it there. Uh, this route planner says we'll get there at 11.58 p.m. Google Maps says 11.15 p.m. So it'll be interesting. Okay, screw it. I'm turning around in the middle of the road. Hammer down. That was a freaking waste of time. Apple Maps, you screwed me up, man. You screwed me up. And I'm a few minutes off. So uh, it also doesn't really know full GPS. I'm 1.5 miles from the highway. So I just drove 1.5 miles in the wrong direction for nothing other than maybe to sit in some traffic, but at least we're all taking the same route. And traffic means I'll probably be closer to Colton, so I could still have a chance of winning if I can jump on the highway before Ryan. But this just got a whole lot more interesting and annoying. I don't know who to believe. Do I believe Apple Maps, Colton, Ryan? I don't know. Is the highway open or closed? It's hard to say, but we're gonna go sit in traffic if, there, if there's a closure and we'll all be in traffic at least together. All right, well, we're just about to merge back onto the highway. I definitely lost probably five minutes there to just confusion. Uh, the highway opened as we were exiting, and so it took the systems a second to uh, respond to that. So let's uh, let's figure out I-70 East, I-70, that's us, 35, going 38, full send, throttle, no time for delay. Speed limit is, I'm not really sure at the moment, so I'm just gonna keep on the throttle. Speed limit 60, so we can go 66. So Kyle has now turned around and is just getting on in Silverthorne and I'm seeing traffic moving up here. Crazy, nothing coming the other way. So it must be just completely closed, which is no fun, but I have no idea if we're gonna have enough time to charge and make it out of the charger before Kyle gets there. Honestly, it's out of my hands at this point. Um, honestly, so like when <laughs> when I'm stopped here and Kyle gets closer, you know, he does still have to go through traffic, but that really shortens my distance for charging basically him getting closer to me. So I don't know, this is a, uh, <sighs> A ball in the air at this point. We have no freaking idea what's heck gonna happen. Okay, Ryan is behind me and Colton is in front of me. And we are continuing along on the intended road on I-70 doing the hill climb. Let's just pop over into the right lane. We got a Tesla tailgating us, those damn Tesla owners. So smug about their charging network. And uh, yeah, we're back to where we were basically. No, No real change at this point. Well, traffic is now moving down to a single lane here. So let's hope we get out of the other side of the tunnel and we can kind of make some distance. Oh, this is freaking nuts. We are just driving through where I imagine the traffic was. I think they're doing some road work in the tunnel so they periodically hit the red lights and shut it down. 
Um, so I'm back in middle position. Ryan's behind me, a little bit closer than he was, of course. Colton is up ahead, so I'm fairly certain I'm not gonna come last place. It just comes down to, can Colton get in and out of the Thornton Charger in time? Once we crest the hill and start going down the other side, I'll ask him his location and we'll see how many miles ahead he is because that traffic, he was just stopped for some period of time. I don't know how long, I don't have the details, but all I know is I have no idea who's gonna win this, but it's gonna be me or Colton, and I cannot believe how close it is. Just crazy. And maybe I should have stuck with going the other way because now I'm stopped. Colton already made it through the tunnel. He's on the other side. He's at mile marker 218, I'm at 213. So it's possible they're shutting this down in stages. And we're at the mercy of Colorado Department of Transportation. But that means it's really gonna be on between me and Ryan. This is crazy. This is a whole other variable we were not expecting. The longer the tunnels close, the better that is for us and the worse that is for them. Because if I get enough of a buffer, I'm gonna be able to get my 15, maybe 16% if I have enough buffer um, and run. And Ryan is in the back of the traffic now. So it's a level playing field between me and the Tycon. Holy smokes, now it's about who can knife through traffic better. Into park. We're currently stopped. Uh, I believe we're just before the Eisenhower Tunnel. My understanding is they're letting waves of traffic through, but um, yeah, I mean, not much we can do. Just uh, sit tight, hope for the best. It's been so much longer, things are happening. The dads are out of the cars, all talking to each other. Um, yeah, we've been here for 20 minutes, something like that. Either way, I really think it would have been a photo finish with Colton. Uh, I, I was just talking to him, I'm like, I think I would have been like a quarter mile ahead or behind you. <laughs> it would have been insane. I don't know who would have won, but uh, Ryan's not too far back, so we're, it's at least a battle for second place. Who can get through traffic the fastest? As am I getting tired of sitting in traffic for 30 minutes straight, knowing we just lost the race we could have won. That's a rough feeling. Well, to be honest, this is quite a shame how this ended in my eyes, because Kyle and I were so insanely close. I would have had to have that charging stop at the end as tight as possible like would have had to be exactly on time so what we're still going to try and do here so you guys and us can still have some closure on an idea of how this race would have ended is i'm going to act like i am still racing kyle i'm going to time basically my entire charging stop from when i get off the highway plug in charge get 15 percent, and i am still going to try and inch the car back to the shop so we are currently at 11 percent state of charge with 33 miles to go it's insane to me because that really does not make sense in my head but five percent is the arrival so the guys just texted me they are now just moving. I have already been through Idaho Springs and I am currently coming up on Evergreen, I believe. So they are just way, way back Would you there. look at that? Woohoo! Uh, we're finally moving a little bit. It was about uh, 20 minutes on the nose actually fully stopped in park. Um, and now we're just crawling along. So progress is progress. Huh, and now it comes up and says save an hour 51 minutes going this way so yeah clearly apple maps has no idea what's going on we have made it to the tunnel the light is green let's hope we make it through ryan should make it through in our batch and then it's full send baby it is everything we can do to maintain speed because i know ryan's going to be doing the same thing he's in it to win it still or at least win second place <laughs> and here we are entering the tunnel kyle is not far ahead of me quarter mile half mile maybe something like that of course i am limited a little bit but it can only go speed limit plus five and there is light traffic i am pulling out all stops or of course keeping it five over the speed limit but i'm putting 110 percent in uh all the passes all the moves everything i can do so i can pass kyle let's see if i can do it 
I am in it to win it versus Kyle. And our speeds are capped at five over. So apex and corners doesn't do anything. But the inside lane is always the shortest around a corner. So <laughs> you can guess what I'm doing on every single bend. Now I am very close to Kyle. I'm going to take every single inch that I can get. My vote for next time we do Race to Vegas is to do 10 miles an hour over the speed limit because um, <laughs> we are so slow, everyone's pretty much just gone. And yeah, brutally slow. But uh, Colton's gonna time his stop in and out of Thornton to see if we would have beat him or not. I think he still would have won. Uh, I think he would have won by a slight margin based off some quick calculations. Well, you guys are gonna be extremely frustrated with me, but what I can tell you is I screwed up the filming, but it was six minutes off the highway to back on the highway. So we are juiced up now. I pulled out directly at 15%. We arrived with 6%, six minutes on the absolute nose back on the highway. So. Our theory is Plaid would have won, and I still have a 4% buffer. I cannot believe the Plaid was anticipating we would arrive at the shop with 0% at 11% state of charge unplugging. Insane. Uh, I'm so mad at myself that I, did, I couldn't, I didn't record it apparently. I thought I was recording, didn't hit it. I was looking at everything, trying to be as quick as possible. <sighs> I'm massively sorry for that. We are officially out of the mountains. We just passed the hogback. Nice G-Wagon. Hell yeah. And um, we are now 64 miles away from home. One hour. And I'm going to do the little calculation. Colton was able to do his charger in and out. I guess he wasn't able to film it. I think he thought he was recording, but he wasn't. Uh, he was able to do that in six minutes off ramp to on ramp, which is pretty amazing. And I do not think I can cover the distance needed in six minutes. Now, granted, I also overcharged at the last charger. And what I should have done was leave maybe 5% earlier, 7% earlier, something like that. And that definitely cost us some time. And in that case, the Lucid would have actually won uh, but we probably still would have gotten stuck at the Eisenhower. I don't know. It's hard to say. So many hypotheticals. I think the moral of the story is this was all down to the wire. And little optimizations from either car could have brought it into the win. If the Tycon had a perfect charging session last time, it possibly could have done it as well. But Colton was smart leaving Edwards as soon as possible to get that, uh, to get through the Eisenhower tunnel which we didn't know was going to be a problem, but it definitely was. So let's go cruise on back up to uh, clear detailing to where we film out of spec detailing and we'll wrap up with all of the numbers and everything like that. What an interesting result. So we know Colton's stop was six minutes on the nose and I was just thinking maybe it would have been faster if Colton just charged because he only needed 15% or 10% added. It may have been faster for him just to wait in Edwards at that point. I thought... I didn't, I didn't do any of his math or anything, but I was thinking he would need to add 20 to 25% in Thornton uh, to make it back. But apparently he said he left with 15%. It would have been probably smarter just to hang out, even though it was a slower session in Edwards would be my guess. But either way, he would have won, um, uh, assuming that the numbers work out here to what we're expecting. So let's continue on. Okay, this is the exit for the supercharger. I gotta stop the stopwatch right as soon as the on-ramp comes on and then we'll know. I haven't checked. So I'm gonna end this clip and I'm gonna let you know. I mean, I'm doing everything the way I would have normally done it. Let's check the time. It was eight minutes and 51 seconds. That is how long it took me to get here. And there was just a gnarly 55 mile an hour zone that I couldn't go any faster than 60 miles an hour in. Um, so yeah, Colton would have won either way. The bridge closer has not changed the results. And, um, but he would have won by two minutes and a half. I mean, that's how close we're talking. Crazy. So just cresting over the hill and I can see the shop there. I'm going to stop my timer exactly when I hit this gate. So we got to take this corner with some speed. This thing is dead. So we are at 2% here. 
I do not want to just go crazy full throttle here. Gently cruise into the shop and let's see what our time is going to be. Wow, what a freaking epic day. Over the railroad tracks, here we are. Boom, right at the gate. 12 hours, 40 minutes, 6 seconds. So I think Kyle would have been 12 hours, 42 or 43 minutes. That's how freaking close this was. We're on the final stretch and uh, it's just a straight shot. I'm going, going the speed limit plus 5, been pegged at it. And uh, this entire run, I have been on it. Every time there's a speed limit change, I get up to speed as quickly as possible or slow down as quickly as possible. Of course, uh, very important to be aware of your surroundings. We are now taking the exit, the last and final exit here. And we are ahead of Ryan and I actually don't see him in the rear view. So he has just been maintaining that like quarter mile, maybe a little bit more gap, something like that. At least that's what the GPS is saying. He might be a little bit farther away than that, but he's very close. Um, so we're 5.7 miles down the road over to clear detailing. So let's blast over there. We'll log the time and, um, man, what a fascinating, freaking awesome return race to Vegas. This was, huh, I'm so glad we did this. This is fascinating. And we learned so much about the car. Less than 10 minutes out. And I was informed that Kyle actually took a slightly different route, a different exit. So... No idea. I'm not going to pass him. I have no idea who's in front. Going to do the best I can, get there as quickly as I can. Less than 10 minutes here. Well, here's some drama for you. So Kyle decided to go up to Crossroads Boulevard, and Ryan's here on Highway 34. Now, the interesting thing with this, Ryan's on the faster route, maybe, because he can go 70 miles an hour. This is a 65 zone. Kyle is in a... 45 mile an hour zone so he can go 50 so wow this is going to be a nail biter here i'm going to head up to the gate and watch the boys come in and see who comes in second place look at this walking up to the gate here here's where we are ryan's here kyle's here holy smokes this is going to be a freaking nail biter let's restart this so ryan is currently on the next road he just got off of 34 it is a race to oh, it's a race to the roundabout there. we are getting so close to colton's but the optimizations can never stop so full send there we go back to 51. <laughs> always about shaving every last second off we can wait a second are you freaking kidding me ryan took the exit before i did i listened to apple maps again and he is literally right in front of me are you kidding me so well that answers the question as to which is the fastest exit to take over here because i always question that coming south but that is absolutely insane i've literally f as fast as i possibly can go right now we cannot pass him oh no come on we're literally stuck at 51. I'm not even gonna break. Not even gonna break. Ryan's sending it in too. <laughs> it's literally neck and neck. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> Who is it? No way. No way. <laughs> Unfreaking real. Mr. Ryan. Ryan in for full optimization, taking the correct exit. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Oh, 
I think that clip might have stopped, but you may have seen some screeching, and I beat Kyle! Woo! Oh, let me give you those stats. That last leg, uh, 158 miles, four miles per kilowatt hour, we had so much downhill. And then since this morning, 793 miles, 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Oh, man. So I cannot believe it. The Lucid, which I thought was going to come in second place, came last. I really should have unplugged sooner from that. Well, I guess we would have both been in traffic. Oh. We both have quite a bit of buffer. <laughs> we do, yeah, huge. So we both should have left earlier. Oh, yeah. I, what do you have, 14? 14, I yeah. think I have 14 as well. Oh, no way. So we both like <laughs> over-calculated the same amount. Way too much. That's really <laughs> um, funny. So you took the exit before I did. I did, and that, that was the right move. That was the right move. <laughs> Dude, that was, <laughs> what an ending. All the way from Vegas. To Literally pull in seconds. here, yeah, oh beautiful. my god, that's, couldn't have done it any better. That was I great. With the gate open, uh, I yes. was so afraid I was gonna punch the key in and then you'd snake me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my plan. I was like, I actually thought you were gonna be behind me. I was trying to figure out how I was gonna block the gate. That's so funny. <laughs> that was so epic. What a great ending to return race to Vegas. Uh, but here's the real winner over here, choosing the uh, Tesla Model S. That was the champion. epic watching you guys come in. Holy <laughs> I called Ryan and I'm like, Kyle's on the next exit. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I was not paying attention. I'm like, oh, I can't even see Ryan in the rear view. We're good. <laughs> there it is. That was so great. Have, did you see him hit the roundabout first? Uh, so I saw we both were coming into the roundabout at the same time, but I was hitting every roundabout. I'm like, oh, even though Ryan's behind me, it's on camera. I'm still going to optimize as much as possible. So I'm hitting roundabouts like tire squealing. And then I see this like light come through the roundabout and not slow down. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, throughout all of I-70, I took the inside lane on curves. I was, too. I was yeah, too. I was too. I was. I mean, we were both doing the because I could be, I knew you were right behind yeah, me in every traffic. Every single time the speed limit changed. Yep. Oh, same. Uh, I was wide open every yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> so we were doing the same. Great work. Oh, but the exit, that was the move. <laughs> Thanks, Google Maps. Oh, there you go. Google Maps. I think uh, Google Maps. <laughs> I don't know. Apple Maps was still correct early on, though, to get us around that traffic. How much farther of a detour was it? Uh, it's like 23 miles, and we were stopped for 30 minutes. So it actually would have been pretty much even. Wow. So, again, it still would have been down to the wire either way. It was busy up there though yeah. too however i would say it's a lot easier in hindsight with the buffer we have i was concerned about taking that i wasn't sure i'd be able to make it me to too i, I didn't because well yeah i don't I've, I've only done that road once i didn't really know where it would lead me to <laughs> <laughs> and like I, I so i was a little bit nervous but if i didn't make the mile and a half detour i wonder if i could have made the first light that you, you may made. Have made the first light but i that charging stop i had Holy smokes. I still I think see, I, I see the stats on that. So I, I did a little bit of math. It would have been quicker to stay and if, if you because you only needed 10%. It would have been quicker to stay where you were. I thought you needed 20%, which in that case it would have justified the second stop. Well, it didn't even need that. I think it needed well yeah, I guess it needed eleven percent to get here because I rolled right. in with three percent. Okay, yeah. So you probably should have stayed in edwards but either way you would have won no matter how you did it charging session i was just like get me out of here and what's really interesting is this is the exact length of trip where the lucid boost advantage goes away yep i would agree and so any stops after this i would have been way behind you guys yeah no matter what even if it was perfect charging i would have had uh, you guys would have smoked me so it's like the day trip is where the big range helps but then very poor charging Yep. versus the Tycon, which you have to work for it, but we <laughs> got here at the same time. We sure did. And the Model S, which, if it was a long range on arrows, would have beat us by even more. Yeah. yeah. So, Model S is the answer. I worked, yes. I worked for that one today. Yeah, nice. Especially we from, all did. <laughs> especially from Beaver and the Green River. Yeah, that Green River stretch. <laughs> yeah. And then I way overcharged there. Wow. What a freaking epic ending. That is crazy. <laughs> so Ryan and I both arrived with 14%, which means like we both overcharged the 
percentage wise the exact same. So I wonder what calculations we were using. I forget what I was basing everything off of, but let's take a look at the final stretch and the stats and the figures. So you have 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour coming here. I was calculating almost a mile per kilowatt hour less. I had no idea it could be that efficient. I was really worried about making the climbs. Meanwhile, I really should not have been, but also the Lucid's not very helpful in figuring this out. 811.6, I used 233 kilowatt hours, three and a half miles per kilowatt hour the whole way back. Again, we gained quite a bit of elevation, but um, just epic, so cool, 14%. Well, there you guys go, an epic race to Vegas. All three of those cars arriving, you know, let's forget the road closer just for a second at the same time. No matter which way we ran it, the Model S would have won again, but it just shows that, okay, these cars are pretty similar. The interesting thing was the Lucid, you know, on a shorter trip, the Lucid has all the advantage. So if you're going to do, you know, a, a long day trip, 700 miles, something like that, the Lucid has the advantage because you get that big range hit initially. But the longer the trip you go, for example, on a cannonball or something like this, of course, charging infrastructure comes into a huge play. And that's what a lot of this is about. But just thinking about the cars for a second, the Taycan is actually faster because it can onboard that energy so much more. It is less efficient, but it can charge faster. It actually means it catches up over a, a long period of time. So the longer the drive, you know, thousand miles, roughly, Taycan's going to be on a thousand mile trip. Tycon has got it. And then Model S, again, if we just use the long range on arrows, if you had perfect charging for Tycon and perfect charging for Tesla, I don't know what would win, Model S or Tycon. It'd be very close. Probably Tycon would be my guess just because of that charging curve. But in the real world where we live, Tesla is your best option for long distance trips. You saw how hard I was working. You saw how hard Ryan was working. Um, but Colton, yeah, he was stretching it. But if you're on a road trip and you're not going for time, you just listen to Trip Planner, overcharge a little bit, and you have such a much easier experience. Anyway, just an epic trip. Can't thank my friends for joining me, for you guys for watching. Long video, but I asked you on Twitter, do you want it broken up into two parts or a single part? So if you comment that this is too long, I gave you the option on Twitter. You should have said, you know, vote on there. You should have voted. I want it in two parts. Well, guess what? Enough of you voted, said you want a three plus hour long video. That's what you got. Hope you enjoyed it. Epic time. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye. <music>